Hello, everyone! Welcome to the stream! And of course, we need to immediately activate the most important thing, what you're all here for. Doggo Cam. There she is. Oh, Doggy's gonna be here for the 50k. There we go. Because Doggo Cam keep. There you are, Sasha. Yes, you're a good girl, Sasha. Camera, why you? I centered you. You don't need to move by yourself. Little silly camera. Stay. Good camera. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I normally have my music off when I'm recording videos, but I'm gonna turn on a little bit of music today because we are at fifty thousand subscribers. Which is a thing. I never thought I'd get this far. So, cool. We're halfway to getting a play button. And what I thought I would do today is we're just going to hang out. And we're going to go through some nostalgia. And I want to go through some of my old saves here. As I have some really old saves. Um, we have the current into the dark season and the copy of it I used it to get thumbnails but we also have all of these old ones we have season one season two Se season two doesn't even have a fucking loading screen anymore season three we have Agris at war a really old copy of it because this is like before the things updated and everything broke so we can look at that and then we have all a bunch of season four at different points and so we can look at all of those and then oh there's that stream where we did scrapyard there's the end of escape from mars we can look through that again so the first probably couple hours i'd say is going to be looking through old stuff and looking at designs and looking at ships and stuff I made in the past and reminiscing about certain videos that were my favorites and things. And then I was thinking that we would uh, pop on to like one of the official servers or something and um, whichever one like keen number something whatever would be and like oh like keen five or something whichever one has a low player count at that time and then I'll go somewhere and I'll just play and build up until I get enough stuff to fire off a giant um, fireworks display and that'll be in the, the the live stream I think that's gonna be fun but overall I'm planning for like you know several hours here of going through old things and reminiscing and you guys got doggo to look at. Look, the doggo. It's the doggo. She's cute. So, where it all started. Season one. Let's see if this actually loads is going to be a real question. <laughs> Downloading mods has failed. Never mind. Okay. Um, let's see if we can repair this. Because I bet some of these mods are old. <laughs> I bet some of these mods don't even exist anymore. <laughs> That's how old they are. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> whatever that mod is, it's dead. Whatever that is, it's dead. And whatever that is, it's dead. Um... Okay, I am going to, because I want to preserve this, I want to preserve this as it is, I'm going to save as um, this fixed. And hopefully that will make a separate thing. Yeah, and then we're going to go in and we're going to... Oh, into the dark mod pad. What? Oh, did it... Did it grab the wrong thing? Oh, no, wait, there we go. Edit settings. Mods. Yeah, because I want to... I'm going to remove these, but I want to keep the old one around 
just so that it, you know, it's the nostalgia of that's the original save. But let's see if this one works. Let's see if this load. It's going to be fun for you because you joined the channel in the last series. Ooh, yeah. You get to see, you get to see everything from the start. So season one started when, like, before I became a Space Engineers YouTuber. So in sort of deep channel lore, if you guys have never been here before for like, like over five years ago sort of thing. Like, prior to that, I was a MechWarrior Online YouTuber. My YouTube channel started because my clan that I was with in MechWarrior Online, we, the clan Nova Cats, we were making training content for our uh, new members. And um, we needed a place to host that. And so then I'm like, oh, I can edit some videos and stuff. Here, I'll put it. I have this YouTube channel that I'm not doing anything with except posting like random snippets of MechWarrior Online gameplay. Here, I'll host the videos on my thing. I'll make the, t I'll make the tutorials for our newbies. And I hosted the, those tutorials on there. And over time, they became more known within the MechWarrior Online community, and I started becoming more of a MechWarrior Online um, YouTuber. Uh, oh, I am loaded. Excellent. I am in creative, I think. <laughs> I hope. Uh, creative tools active. Right-click will delete blocks. Uh, okay, thank you. Hey, it's the jump jack! Let's go over. I uh, wish you 100k next week and a million just around the corner. Thank you. By the way, when's the next Project Zomboid stream? Next weekend, most likely. Yes, next weekend. That is when um, Creed is back and he's available to uh, do some stuff. But, so, I was a MechWare Online streamer. Oh, do Doggo, come back. You're the, you're the, you're the star here. Ugh. Silly doggo. She is gone. And that went for a duration. The Vagabond is 10 kilometers away. Okay. Uh, they don't have any video feed here on YouTube. Yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing any drop frames or anything. I should be good. It is streaming on my end. And I was making Space Engineers content as like a side hustle, essentially, at that time. And I was just like, hey, cool, I'm just going to play this game because I like it. And I'm going to just do a playthrough, call it a season, and just do what I want. And I made several videos and then eventually along comes the YouTube algorithm and lightning strikes one of my videos and that video being my automatic mining rig thing that I made and it's, it's the most viewed video of my channel it's like 250,000 views or something like that Oh, there's the base. There's a base down there. <gasps> it's my old Zion on the moon. All right. Oh, I gotta, gotta, gotta go look at that first. And it, it, it's just the YouTube algorithm decided that that video was going to be the video for my channel. And that video exploded and I gained thousands of subscribers and I just went... Oh, well, my Mech Warrior content was getting me, like, in the realm of several hundred views. But these new Space Engineers things are getting me several thousand views. So how about I switch over to Space Engineers and the, the rest is history. 
Oh my god, my season one world. <laughs> oh, this this is so pretty. Alright, I, I, the jump jack is to nobody. It needs to be to me. I set it to nobody because I wanted to make a uh, blueprint of it. And... It's stuck. Oh, come on. Dock already. Silly thing. So, season one started... Like, this is like old... Um... <laughs> This is like old, old space engineers, this original save here. Um, it started with the old dropship, if you guys remember that thing. Oh my god, do I have a blueprint of this old dropship? I wonder. Uh, would it be an F-10 here? This, the spawn ship? The old, old, old spawn ship. Um, space engineers, ridge... An old spawn ship. Where is it? Oh, come on. It... It's out there somewhere. If people remember, it was like a large grid drop ship. It was absolutely huge. But that's because back in that time, back in that like in that um, space engineers you didn't have um, small grid um, like survival kits survival kits didn't exist like <laughs> I started like it just they just didn't exist it was med bays like you had to drop with an entire med bay an entire assembler and an entire refinery in this basic ship like in this large grid thing, and that was what you had to start with. <laughs> oh. And, uh, yeah, so this was season one, where I... Oh, God, there's the dromedary! Okay. Oh, so many freaking memories are coming back. So I built up some stuff on the, the planet over there, but then ended up moving my butt out to the moon finding this nice spot here and I had a giant drilling rig that ground out everything here just a huge drill ring on pistons uh, I, don't th I don't think it's here anymore no I took it apart but all this area here got ground out and turned into resources and then I built up this giant base which was the idea was that I'd have all this assembly and refinery, like refinery and uh, fuel storage and everything here below ground, and then I'd build an entire like city and platform on top of it with these big long arms reaching out into the the four corners, and inspired by the matrix with Zion. It would have this central tower with this is like this is like old school um, rotor turret, super old school rotor turret. Like this is rotor scripts with a designator turret, and <laughs> I think the shield mod was one of the deleted mods. Ah, oh, probably. Yeah, the shield isn't here. And the uh, shield generator on top is missing. Yeah, good, good spot. Yeah, yeah, that is a lot of cargo. I wonder how much, I wonder how full it is. It's a very good question. Uh, oh. People are talking to each other. <laughs> uh, cargo. How many of these actually have things in them? Uh, a good amount of it, actually. Only a few of the cargo containers are actually empty. <laughs> this is, I have so much just shit here. It's just so much stuff. Like, there's there's just infinite quantities of iron and such on this base that you could just build for days and not run out of any resources. 
Is it because I did everything large in this series? Uh, my giant ship printer that I did here. Uh, does solar system have no per tam? <gasps> it probably doesn't. Oh my god, yes. This is probably pre-other planets. Uh, entity list. Planets. <laughs> That's it! <laughs> no per tam. Um, no, um, whatever the other one was as well. What is it? Because this is just alien. We have Mars. And, uh, you have Earth-like, Mars, and alien, and their moons. No, no Pertam, no Triton. This is pre those planets. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and what do we got inside here? There's the nano machine. There's the nano fabricator that built this entire base. See, out of like there's build and repair, and then there's like there's these nanobot stuff. I actually like this nanobot for balance wise because it takes a really long time to get it running and it's a lot of power and I think that's appropriate for something that does all this free work for you where you build and repair you can build in like your first 30 minutes of playing and then it just it trivializes all like work you know what I mean and these Incon drones and stuff are just constantly yelling uh let's see we have the blackbird here. This old pile of crap. <laughs> it's so, so bulky. It's so bulky. How did I make this so bulky? I put entire, okay. Did I put like entire large fuel tanks in the wings or something? Oh my God, this thing is so, this is so far too bulky. <laughs> yeah, this is like, it, we'll, we'll see my designs get better and better over the years, but uh, this thing is so big. <laughs> what is even in this chin of it? it what, what did I put in this chin to make it worthwhile? There's like a whole battery down here. God damn. I would never do that these days. It's too bulky. Uh, what else here? Got the... So this is the the nano room. And then we go up the staircase here. So we got the power storage and power generation room. Again, very bare bones. Very... In this room, I never, ever did anything with. Except for putting some uh, utilities in the corner. And then we had the uh, observation deck up top. And then there was the roof where the shield... The base shield was. But yeah, you can see these build and repairs over here that were uh, just slapped in here at some point just to be able to, okay, I actually need to be able to, to build these things and not take a million years. But it, yeah, this thing's so big. And what is its weapons? Four gats and a missile turret? God damn. <laughs> so, <laughs> so much bulk. To just this, like, no gun is ridiculous. <gasps> well, we have the dromedary! Okay, I actually really liked this ship's design. I think this ship's design slaps. Okay. Because you're just sitting up here and it feels like you're like an oil tanker. You got this great big long ship in front of you. Oh yeah, the Vagabond's up in orbit. We'll, we'll go check out the Vagabond here in a second. Uh, we still got hydrogen? Yeah, we do. Oh, man. Yeah, this thing was my tanker. And it has the, uh, super duper jump drive on it, right? Has a bunch of build and repairs. Yeah, the hyperdrive. <laughs> Where you can jump like a half a million kilometers. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, unfortunately, my leopard dropship that I used in this series isn't here anymore because it got uh, it got thrown into the pit. This pit right over here. My giant ass welding pit that just has like 150,000 welders in the bottom of it. But yeah, let's uh, boost up to the Vagabond here. I actually want to salvage this uh, dromedary um, design. I want to retrofit it, make it new again, because. Uh, it's pretty good, in my opinion. I like it. Oh, and I'm going pretty fast. Ah, flip over. Slow down. There we go. Yeah, very well. I remember that this thing. Oh, I can't remember who made it. Somebody in my community made this and then I'm like cool that's really fun and then I had that one episode where I I jumped uh, somewhere and then I cut so I I jumped my ship locally and then I cut the video in editing and then I put my ship really really far away and then I jumped again to get the continuity of the jump and then um Oh, this guy's building me? Carrying me? Oh, cool. <laughs> and then I uh, activated a warhead on the ship and blew up my jump drive and then made it so I had to investigate the... Uh, oh, yeah, I could change all these ca catwalks out. I investigate this giant ship out in the middle of nowhere, and that's how I got the Vagabond, and that's how I got the uh, super hyperdrive things. The... Uh, the super hyperdrive right behind here. Oh yeah, there was the my little grinding welding ship. Through here, and there's into the this room, and then into the cockpit. Uh, it still says yeah, built by me. Can't remember the person's name who did this. Ah, if you go back to that particular episode, you'll be able to find out who did it. And then, this is something that I never really used, but I, I do like the fact that if you put these 2 by one stairs in this orientation, the it, it still acts as a staircase, but it's like a really steep staircase. You can make very vertical ships with that. Oh, old style interior. Hell yeah, this is a five-year-old save. Like, <laughs> this is old space engineers. No info detected. All the scripts are probably screwed up. Yeah. We got the main room here. <laughs> Using the windows as staircases. And, yeah. It's pretty much the Vagabond. There's nothing more into the ship. Oh, I'm going to have to go get myself a glass of water. I'm talking too much. But it is coated. The absolute... Just coated with guns on the outside. Uh, let me just move the daytime and get it some light. It is a bit bland. It definitely needs a paint job. But... Like, like this ship is the kind of ship that could really use a glow up because one thing, this is awesome. This front end of it and back in there is the cockpit and it's all like blue inside and it's got these red on the outside and it's like, that looks amazing. The rest of the ship though is way too just white. <laughs> it needs to uh, be... Uh, it needs a glow up. Yeah, this thing is pre railguns too. It definitely needs some railguns in here.
Yeah, thank you for showing up for the 50k milestone stream. Bring it back in another season. <laughs> God, look at this engine cluster back here. It's got this little indent so you can get the side thrusters. Oh my god, it's huge. Hey, well, at least now that I fixed the save, I can load in and I can blueprint these things and uh, do some work on them. I, I want to, in this current season, in, in Into the Dark, I want to rebuild this. I want to rebuild this with proper, like, new blocks and such. Uh, new here, how are you? Can I just I am freaking amazing today. Oh, hi, dog. Oh, you just showed up beside me. Hi, Sasha. What you doing, doggy buggy? Oh, you're a good girl. Oh, hey, look, my little alerts worked. Yes! <laughs> my alert worked! The Godly Gamer just subscribed. I set those up and I had no idea if they were going to work or not. <laughs> I know, she just came out of nowhere. I looked to my right and then all of a sudden there was a dog staring at me and I'm like, Bleh. But I think this ship, especially because the for realistic thrust in the current season, its thrust is so spread out across the ship. I mean, possibly even get it to the point where we don't need these large thrusters. Hey, people subscribing, it's working. And maybe like add more s side thrust over here. Ah, oh, people with lo oh, long names are overrunning the little subscription alert. Oh, I should watch that. Okay. Ugh. But yeah, I think this thing could work well in the, the current season. Which I am actually going to very quickly. Blueprint. Hey, got it. Okay. But yeah. That is pretty much all the reminiscing about season one that I can do. Um, oh, uh, one last thing though. Okay, it should be over here somewhere. If it's still there. Uh, also, dog is barking at the door, so I gotta go let her out. So I probably have to do that real quick for her here. Ah! Okay, dog. I'm gonna come and let her out. Be right back. Okay, dog is outside. She's a happy girl. Now I gotta turn on my security camera in the backyard so I can watch her and make sure she doesn't do any, uh, stupid things. Beat a bomb, thanks for subscribing. Uh, I don't know if, uh, unsubbing and resubbing does it. You can test. I might, uh, like, have to put a cooldown on it or something if, uh, it... It gets spammed, but, oh well. Uh, there's somewhere over here... I had built a automatic drill rig thing and it was collecting ore and I had a an AI thing flying between it and my base. I can't remember where it is. Um, so let's look at my entity list for grids by owner name. Lost Recon. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, owner Kanjaji. My little mining ship. <laughs> Why is there just a copy of the, uh... <laughs> Why are you, what are you doing out here? There's just a random copy of the ship in the middle of nowhere. Okay. <laughs> uh, owner name. There we go. Uh, there's one in just, in, in space. I guess this was me getting a blueprint or something. The Ion Grinder. Oh, wait, oh, where's this? Oh, this is on Alien! Uh, this is an alien, this is like a mining thing on another planet. This is... Oh, this is my outpost on... Europa! Yeah, this is my little outpost on Europa! And my little oil, like, ice derricks to dig out these holes. 
I forgot about this. I completely forgot. My God, this is nostalgic for me as well. This is ridiculous. Yeah, and so then, then there's the hydrogen derricks. Then there's the jump jack that I was in. I'm another hydrogen derrick. This is a static grid something. Okay, where is this? Oh, this is on. Oh, this is on Mars. This is my um, uh, my platinum mine. Yeah, this is my platinum mine. Uh, con congrats on the fifty thousand subs. The question, if you don't mind, was the warp drive? You can walk through the middle of it. Are you? Um. There are some mods. I think it's the Warfare Two DLC add-ons pack that has hard jump drives that you can walk through the center of. I think I think that's the uh, I think another one. There is other um, jump drive mod packs out there and such. Uh, fighter, yeah, that's just that thing. The hydrogen hauler drone. There's the dromedary, my atmospheric worker, my atmospheric lifter, the moon base, and the vagabond. Okay. Yeah, Nat. He's the one that put that in the mod pack for Into the Dark, so he should know. And then there's just a bunch of uh, enemy grids around the world. Including some dangerous things. But that is pretty much it for uh, Season 1. Uh, I love the fact that I can see my base from, from orbit. And it looks like I've actually, like, I've made my own crater for it. <laughs> so let's head on out of here. And let's check out Season 2. Which should be the fun one, because it has the space elevator in it. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if Season 2 is going to load again, so we'll probably ch check it here. We'll see if these mods work or not. And then while it's loading, I'm going to run off and grab a glass of water as soon as I fix its mods. That is if they ever load. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. It's got two that don't work. Okay. So I have to make a new copy of it. Uh, season two. Fixed. And we gotta go fix it up. Okay. Season two fixed. Is this, um members stream no no I don't have I don't have members or anything yet clean these two out hopefully that isn't anything super important and then while this is loading I'm gonna run off and grab a glass of water and I'll be right back Ah, I knew I'd be back. Season two is huge. So I figured it was going to take a long time to load on this one. <laughs> we have the uh, <laughs> like 20 kilometer uh, long grids in this one. <laughs>
yeah, build repair is OP. But uh, build repair is also fun if you just want to, like, just build something. But if you're trying to make, make it a challenge, it just gets you too easy. Oh, right. This is up in this. Oh, God. We're on the elevator. Stop. Elevator, stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good place to load in. That's actually one of the most picturesque things that I've ever done in Space Engineers. It's a goddamn orbital tower. Oh, God, I love this thing. Actually, not that far down from the uh, station. Which, man, okay. Season 2, I got overambitious with all of my designs, and they got too large just way too large like I would have loved to actually finish this thing and build this out here as a nice like trade station up here but it just like I never finished any of this stuff like it just the rooms are too like this, this I finished. This was cool. I made a nice cafe up here. I even put stuff on the menu. But overall, I just got too ambitious. I I built a city. Yes, that city is a bunch of empty buildings that had no purpose. Like, uh, yeah, that's this this shuttle. That's this little shuttle. This this flies from the moon to my space station, which uh, from like this this uh, this uh, blah, 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 blah. fucking space elevator to the asteroid near the moon. Um, which there it is, asteroid. Okay, we're going to the asteroid base. We're going to start there. My body is going to stay on the space elevator, and we're going to go to the asteroid base. Oh, there it is. There's the stuff. There's my stuff. Actually, we'll... You good here? Elevator car? We're good? Okay. You stay there, elevator car. Oh, I see. This with space just got real. Oh, that would look real good. Here, I can add it in afterwards. So, this is my asteroid base. So season two, what I started season two as is I thought what I was going to do is I was going to like, um, economy just came out and I want to check here. We, we have Triton. No, wait. Triton's not important, is it? Yeah. We, okay. We had Triton now. But we don't have per tam. Yeah, we don't have per tam yet. So, we're here getting more planets slowly. <laughs> Why are the jump drives on the asteroid? Oh, that's just a ship. That's just connected here. This is my, um... This is my jump drive sled. And so it's a, a little ion ship that's just got enough ions to maneuver, but it just has a ton of jump drives. So the point was that you would take an existing ship, like like this thing, for example, and you dock with this, and then this thing would jump drive you like across the known universe because it has so many jump drives and enough batteries to recharge them all. And so you could go and do really long range merchant stuff. So my original goal with this season was to start with the jump track and then spend pretty much the entire season doing the economy update because that had just come out when this season started and see how far I could get basically not building anything for myself and just relying on economy and like doing very little like building aside from like purchasing ships and purchasing materials and like stuff like that from economy basis 
Well, I gave up on that at some point throughout the season, and I just started doing mega structures because I don't know why. And so this jump ship here was originally to do the merchant, like the, there was that um, mission that was like um, ferry the resources, like deliver them to a thing, but some of them would spawn 30,000 kilometers away. And so you needed like 15 jump drives all in one spot with 2,000 kilometers each. So that way you could, um, is there city builder rover still there? Probably. Uh, we'll find it later. We'll, we're going to look through the entire save here. You, you need these like 15 to 20 jump drives so you could jump 30,000 kilometers, deposit the thing, and then jump 30,000 kilometers back. And that's what this jump drive sled thing was for. <laughs> um, this was the first ship I bought with money, and it has the it has the uh, build and repair, but the drill and fill, I think it's called, um, little things. The drill system. Yeah, Nanobot drill and fill. So that it could go mining. <laughs> is that, yeah, this is a heavily modified economy ship here. The, you can buy this ship. It's called the Prospector, I believe. And it's, uh, you can buy it in vanilla game. So what I did is I found this asteroid right here. And I found that it had this hole in it. And I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm going to live inside the asteroid. And so I flew into the asteroid and I lined up some grids here. And I got these doors so that they were all like, nicely aligned and figured out where I could set up the my sh my stuff and I need to get myself into the control room here and oh my god all of the okay all the hangar doors every single hangar door just open god there's so many airlock Interior, 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 open. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, I need the actual hangers. Airtight hangar doors. Open. There we go. Now this place is opening up. Perfect, okay. Asteroids and holes are the best home ever, yes. Congratulations on 50,000 subs. I've been watching since you had 60 subs. Oh man, thank you. Thanks for sticking around for so long. Oh, they're closing automatically. Right, I have a script that closes them. Ah, no. Let me in. Okay, I'm in. Okay, we'll look around with the uh, spectator camera. We have four docks here. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, four docks. Four, five docks. Five docks. Spinning reactor. Yeah, we'll get to that quite soon. This dock was for a mining ship. I don't know where it is right now. It's somewhere. It might have gotten deleted. Uh, oh, wait. this is, the, is this the mining ship? Yeah, this is a tiny little mining ship meant to go get, like, targeted materials. Okay, it had a couple of the... Uh, the drill and fill systems but it was meant to just go around in space and like grab like platinum and uranium off asteroids or whatever it was oh right and was this the first i think this was the first season that i did um scarce resources so the resources were spread out across the system and so i had to go and find them oh hey it's okay man D don't worry if you're late we have, ooh, a slightly better fighter of mine, although still kind of stubby, but a lot more DACA, which is better. But you can see I'm starting to get my my style of, like, this um, armor banding and greebling over stuff. And then the next one is empty, and the next one is empty. Okay. But they're all themed. You can see like this one's purple and this one's orange and this one's black and this one's blue and this one's red and they're all cute. And then you could go through their little dock here and then you go in through the thing and then you get into the nice wood paneling inside. 
And then we can go through this thing. And then we get into the actual base. Yay! This was my lobby. I have the little reception here. And you could just be like, hey, how you doing? And there's my... Oh, my old logo! Look at it! It's old! It's old as shit! <laughs> okay, I think we changed this. I think we changed this. Okay, got to boot up Whip's Image Converter. Uh... Hey, okay, it still works. It's still installed. Uh, no, we don't need to update to the newest version. We're going to change out uh, my new one, logo files. Uh, da, 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 da. Logo. Logo that. And let's go convert and copy to clipboard. Custom data. No, wait, what is it? It's edit text. Updated! <laughs> That's way better than before. Uh, YouTube, shut up. I don't want to insert ads. This is not an ad sh stream. Come on, stop giving me notifications. Okay. Yeah, new logo. So then, dry dock was this way. We'd come down this... Uh, hallway here and it would go all the way out to the uh, to the surface of the the asteroid where you'd have the large ships docked yeah it's unfortunately that's the what you can do with uh, whips image converter and uh, the LCDs in the game but whatever and we'd have the battery bank the refinery storage and assembler control we'd go through here and refinery storage and assembly control is down through here. Everything's all sealed up, but that's fine. We can just spectator cam around. And through here was assembler. I really, really, really like this assembler room. It is my spinny assemblers. And we had everything all listed out here. All the different items and my ingots and such. And my different assemblers with their speed. On rotors spinning around. I think this looks amazing. Uh, and we come back out through there. If we came down here, this was the refinery room. Just a bunch of refineries. Everything was nice and color coded. We have the different ones over here. These ones were um, power and speed for basic materials like iron. And these ones over here were yield for quality materials like uranium and platinum and such and gold. And then we'd have the different uh, storage compartments. So you can see like this one's components. These are all these are all reset. Those should be much bigger. It's not how they should be. Well, we got our, our giant storage facility here. Uh, unsorted cargo. We got ores in there. This is ingots. Uh, needed a little bit of light over there. We had one that was uh, full. Full of ingots. Oh, oh my dog's running around outside on the camera. <laughs> But if we head back up the staircase, oh, she's barking at something. We could head into the warning room and it was the battery bank. So that's where I stored all my power on the base. A lot of batteries in here. All the walls are batteries and all the floor, like all these things are batteries and it's all good. But, uh, wait, can you guys actually hear her bork bork when she's coming through my uh, phone here? Watching the camera, or are you just saying bork bork because I'm saying she's barking? And then over here, we've got uh, the uh, sort of control room, different uh, door controls and inventory sorting and stuff. Ow! And then my little uh, in base rover, which I can make so much smaller these days. But I had to put. Uh, 
I had to put the uh, artificial mass blocks on here in order for it to work in the artificial gravity. But we could drive around the base. There's that hole in the unfinished ceiling here. Uh, then back here is the uh, the med room. You can go to the talk to the receptionist, wait in the waiting room, go through, and there was the the med and all of the uh, the doctor stuff. And then you could go into the the laboratory room, or we have an, we had an isolation chamber. So if you were in isolation, they could observe you and you could live in here until you are uh, out of your isolation. In case you had some sort of crazy disease. She only borked a couple times and now she's done. And then we had... The elevator! Floor one, let's go. Ah, now she's borking more. Elevator! Elevator! Okay, I gotta go get her bork borks. Bring her butt in. But, we'll wait until the elevator gets here. As it's coming down... And it should, it should trigger the door to open. There is a, yeah, there it is. There's a sensor there to uh, open the door when there is a block detected. So we'll get on the elevator and then we'll, I gotta go get the doggo. I will be right back, but we are going to, uh... we got the different floors and then this is, I can rotate this whole elevator. I love this this part of it. Okay, I'm gonna press the button, and the elevator is gonna rotate while I'm gone, and you guys can enjoy that. Ooh. There we go. That's a good spot. We're back. Okay, puppy wuppy. Sasha, go to your bed. We gotta reactivate doggo cam. I said go to your bed. Bed. Go to bed. Piece of beef jerky for the wolf. All right. So the reason why I had that um, elevator do that turn was that I would have my rover and I would want to drive it on here and then the elevator turns around such that I could drive the rover off without having to um, deal with it. Not have to like go or back out. It was great. Uh, so this is floor one. We can go to floor two. I This is like real old school um, elevator work because it's using these long ass pistons. But basically what it's doing is every piston is a floor. And so going to floor two is just fully extending one piston. So it is actually the same time to go from floor one to floor two than it is to go to floor one to floor four. Oh, right. Floor two is never uh, implemented. <laughs> uh, floor three. Because it would always just be one piston. So if I see if I press four, I'm going twice the speed now. If I press three actually stop for a duration because one is retracting and the other one is extending <laughs> so yeah the elevator could use some work the elevators down on the planet though are uh are better made 
and they work better. As long as that script is uh, is functioning properly. Floor three. No, floor three is the spinning reactor. Heading down the hallway here, and then there is this nuclear sign. Through the airlock. That was uh, this simple door script. And we have the reactor room. <laughs> oh, this is probably one of my favorite builds ever. We have the spinny reactor core. So, spinny reactor core. This is like real old shit. This is pre-hinge hinge. Like, this, these are modded hinges before hinges existed like this is this is some old shit here but this particular spot was i made because there was an iron ore deposit in this asteroid and it was perfectly circular and I mined it out with the drill and fill, and I noticed there was this perfectly circular void in the base. Oh, come on. What do you want, Sasha? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, I a girl. Oh, you eat your jerky. Come on. Oh, it's a puppers. Oh, it's a puppers. Oh, it's a puppers. What do you want, dog? I already gave you a whole thing of jerky. Go, go, go to sleep for a while. I got a live stream. Okay. So there's this perfectly circular. Uh, she's gone. Okay. I'll turn off the duck oak thing again. Perfectly circular. <laughs> Think of iron. Mind it out. And I'm just like, what am I going to do with this void? And I'm like, wait, I have a really, really interesting idea. How about I put something in there that spins? <laughs> and so I made this thing. Oh. Uh, reactor start. Trigger now. Let's go. Not a fan of reaction videos. This one has me spinning. <laughs> oh, I love it. And then this is where my relationship with the coder, DF Percush, began. Because he made this little script here. Um, where is it? No. Program, reactor spin, edit. Yeah, DF Prakash, 2019. He he watched my video, figured out the variables that uh, I was using for my names of the things, and he set up the proper stopping positions and everything, and just made this thing so cool and it also scales based on current power output so if i spawn in a jump drive or something something that needs power and like wants to charge up which i don't know if i have room in here to spawn a jump drive but if i think i can put one in the hallway huh, open can i not put one in the hallway here Oh, do I need to put on creative? Oh, yeah, I need to put on creative. So, let me just fill the hallway with jump drives here. There's obviously a lot more power being used. This thing should spin faster because it is drawing more power. Um, but, yeah. Is the reactor even on? I don't know. Reactor. Large reactor. On. It is not outputting anything currently. Um, creative spawns in fully charged. Oh, shit. Okay. That's unfortunate. Whatever it is. It's, uh, it spins faster when it has... When it's doing stuff here, let me uh, spawn in uranium. Come on. 
reactor, uranium. Hey, there it goes. Oh, there it is. It is working now. Woo! <laughs> so yeah, it uh, spins a bit faster if you're in, uh, if it's generating power. So we can uh, get rid of those. So the whole point was that based on the power output of the base. Oh, and you see it's slowing down because it's not charging those uh, jump drives anymore. <laughs> so it automatically adjusts to the amount of power that the base is drawing and changes its spin rate. I kind of want to, and I probably should at some point, remake this with new hinges. And so that way it is up-to-date and proper and functioning and such. But yeah, that was a spinning reactor core. Oh yeah, it also uses this color changer script so that when you do stuff, uh, we can, we can uh, stop the reactor by pressing 9. You're going to see it changes to red. And then it goes into a particular position and then stops there. All right. Ah, uh, how am I going to get out of here? That's one thing is I hadn't installed a, a button to open the door <laughs> if I needed it. And then floor four, one more floor as we ride the elevator. Right, floor four is outside of uh, gravity. N gnome biting tongue. <laughs> what did you do? I'm guessing that's a season five thing that you haven't run into yet. And floor four is not... Um, God, it's not even aligning properly. Floor four was going to be... Oh, God, come on. Was going to be an exterior dock here. So this was going to come forward... And it was going to come out into this area, and there was going to be a dock in here. And you would be able to get in through this hole. So it's basically connecting this hole and the uh, the other hole down there. So there's that hole through, and there is this hole in the top. And it was going to connect the two such that you could have ships come in and land and be fixed up here without being exposed to open space and then you could line the exterior here with turrets so no one could like um peek in and attack you that easily so it's going to be a, a, a very secure kind of base but i never got around to finishing it but that was the original plan but but we'll head back down to floor one and you can see here when we're going down a lot of floors we go fast because uh, all of the pistons are retracting at once. And as we zip by the floors, they open a little bit because they're not smart. <laughs> but I think that's it for the asteroid base. Uh, yeah, other than that, there's like some building repairs underneath the floor here. So you can repair up stuff when you're working, like that you're, uh, like landing a ship in. Um, yep, that's it. Yeah, thanks everyone for the congratulations. It's, this is this has been a really fun time, doing all these YouTube videos. I'm happy people are enjoying them, and I plan to keep making them for a long time. Uh, yeah, that's it for the Astro Base. So, let us go to Midway. And we will drop our butts onto Midway Station. And make it daytime. 
So, Midway Station. My little space station attached to the planet. We are actually a static grid that is on the surface. And we're up here. We're at 0.27 gravity. And, uh... <laughs> yeah. Wait, this, this is ridiculous. It's, it's, it's a little ridiculous. We have a conveyor system all the way to the, f to the ground. We have this dock here with the uh, bumpers from these wheels in order to stop the, uh, the car as it's coming up. Let's go get the car and bring it up here. Oh yeah, we'll get to the collapsible solar array. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll get to that. And when we eventually go down, we'll ride the elevator. It's going to take us a few minutes, but we'll ride the elevator. Alright. So we've got the elevator here. We've got the handbrake on and off. We've got the, the program to stop. We also have our ability to move up and down. So let's go up at 25 meters a second. And we are slowly rising. If the orbital elevator broke at the base, how long would it take to fall? Um, well, I mean, the maximum speed is 100 and change in normal game. So it's like 20 kilometers tall. So it would take like a couple minutes to fully collapse. So as we get close to the top, a sensor should trip, and that sensor should... Oh, let me just turn down the game, in-game audio a little bit here. It just seems like it's a little loud. I'll just drop it a, a couple decibels. There we go. The, there's, there should be a sensor. It should trip that is registering that we're getting close, and it sh should nicely park. If I'm not mistaken. But also it could just um, explode. God, I love the sound that makes when it lands. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it makes such a good clunk when it shows up here. So these, these wheels catch it and stop its movement and it its sensor goes and you can see that the handbrake got turned on and the uh the script got turned off and if i stand here this little thing extends although this is something i could rebuild to make this uh, better and then you can just walk across here and then you're on the uh the station Yeah, so Midway! This was meant to be a place where you could take an ion ship in, and that ion ship... Uh, is this an automatic one? Yeah? Yeah, it's an automatic one. This ion ship would be able to come in here and still be able to fly at this altitude, and then you could ride the elevator down. And this is the cafe where we have... Yeah, that is probably the most vertigo-inducing uh, view ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can get some burgers and some pizzas and some stuff. All from the cafe here. Put on the jukebox and then sit and eat at the, the chairs. And then come out here and be on the dance floor for, like, whatever this is. And get vertigo and... Yeah, it's good. Uh, over here was the Kopesh. Uh, built by Pariah Devalis, one of my friends from the uh, uh, Clan of a Cat, from my Mech Warrior group. There's his symbol and the name. Yeah, get Vertigo and throw up the food he just bought. 
This was a ship that I built so that I can have a nice combat ship, and it served me quite well in the series. And this is its new parking spot up here at the Midway Station. And then we have this little thing right here, which is a uh, the way that this um, grid can connect up here, and that it can recharge, because the elevators run on batteries. Uh, if you drop a penny from here, we'll be able to kill someone. Well, no. Uh, the MythBuster showed that that the terminal velocity of a penny is not enough to cause serious injury. The terminal velocity of a penny would bruise, maybe, but not kill you. So even if you drop it from orbit, well, and it depends how high you drop it from orbit, because if it's going like way beyond its terminal velocity, when it hits the atmosphere, it'll just like disintegrate. So I don't think it'll work. The, the penny's just too light. Unless the penny was going like the speed of light, like it's going like many kilometers per second, and then it will um, just explode. But yeah, here's the elevator car. And we can start the elevator going down. Yes, a ball bearing, because it is much less surface area with a lot more mass, it's gonna have a much higher um, terminal velocity. So to go down, it should be that we undo our brakes and we go down at 25. So if we just undo our brakes, we we free fall, and that's not good. Uh, also, I have to turn my propulsion on, I believe. Yeah, there we go. So if we just undo our brakes, it's it's complete free fall. After you get to about 50 or 60 meters a second, something um, warps and like one side starts falling a little bit faster and then it clangs and then it breaks. But with this script that DF Prakash wrote, because he's awesome and he noticed that I needed it, it will it'll stop the downwards velocity at 25 meters a second. And so we are now in a uh, nice, even, constant descent. And uh, yeah, we can get out and walk around because there is still gravity here. We are not orbiting sideways, so there is still gravity. Yeah, you could do that with event controllers, sure. But this was pre-event controllers, remember? Remember, per, per tam doesn't even exist. A whole planet doesn't exist. Like. It doesn't matter about a whatever <laughs> block. <laughs> but yeah, we can see as we come on down here, there's all the uh, the junctions in between bits of conveyorage that the, uh, when I built this thing, it had the like um, inchworm inching its way up, building the towers and it used those conveyors in order to get the materials it needed up here. And you can see every one of these, uh, as it goes by, there should be a white band. Yeah, right there. That's one section. So every everywhere between one white band and the next white band was built with one projector. And then it would go higher, and then it would cut off the other stuff below, and they would Reproject, and they would build that section again. Okay, uh, do you want to ride the elevator all the way down while we talk, or do you want me to like free fall and uh, do a base jump beside the elevator shaft? Your guys' choice. You can see, look at that, look at the shadow. Look at this goddamn shadow. <laughs> look at this shadow. <laughs> can you imagine you're playing on a server and you're just like going along and then this, this shadow just comes along and you're like what the fuck uh let's find the car where is it it's gonna be along here somewhere the shadow of the car 
Uh, we're not that far down yet. Where are we here? There it is! <laughs> There's the shadow of the car coming down. <laughs> yeah, I, I basically turned the entire planet into a sundial. Yeah, but there's the car. <laughs> it's up there. <laughs> it's right there. Uh, oh, God, I love it. Okay. Well, I see most people say jump, so... We will base jump. Bye, elevator. See you later. Uh, this is still going to take a minute. Like, we're going at 110 meters a second here. This is still going to take a minute to get to the base because we are really high up. Ah. But we can start to see some bits of the base. There's the bit of the... I can see a little bit of the city over there. I can see the industrial park. Uh, over there is the air control tower. Uh, we're getting a little close to this thing. As we sort of slowly move by it here. Oh, hi, Sasha. You're back. If you get in your bed, you can be an internet star. But I can't put you... I can't point the camera over there because you're curled up beside my bed. Oh, we're in atmosphere. We're in atmosphere. Yeah, there's the city. Or at least... City, in quotation marks. It's just a few skyscrapers. We're taking our time here. Almost there. Almost there. Activate. I didn't need to do that early. <laughs> And here we go with the dock at the bottom. So the... Uh, what we got here? The car should be down here shortly. There it is. Yeah, it'll be another minute or a couple minutes. Yeah, Baumgartner, right? He was pretty high up there for his jump from or orbit. So this is the, the base of the space elevator. It's got, uh, what is it? Right here. This is the, how you get on it. Oh, God. It, the game is like, <laughs> the FPS is not stable. There's too much going on. Yeah, you stand here and uh, a little thing extends and allows you to get on. But we will leave that for a second. I want to come back. Uh, probably like, one or two minutes from now and see the thing landing. But we had this big ramp down this way and we had the first of our better elevators, although this one is kind of uh, shit. It's This one wasn't finished yet. Yeah, SimSpeed's holding up. This elevator is not finished, but we have my tunnel system. These are big ass tunnels. I want to. Uh, ah, there we go. 
Uh, how much PCU? I don't want to know how much PCU is going on in this save. <laughs> uh, how do I figure that out? Uh, I don't know. Like, how do you figure out how much PCU is being used? There's a lot of PCU. I should say a lot. Uh, G? Oh, well, my PCU is unlimited. But I can say for sure, uh, entity list here, grids by PCU. The Earth base is about half a million. Um, I don't know what this is. This is another part of the Earth base is another 200 million, not 200 million, 200,000. Another part of the Earth base is another 200,000. Like, because the, the, this base here is actually split into about 10 different grids, and each of them have started to get to the PCU limit of a grid. <laughs> but in total, there's probably like a, a mil and a half, maybe, PCU across this entire save. Something like that. Yeah, I'd say around there. Somewhere between like 1.2 to 1.5 million PCU. What shenanigans are you doing now? We're revisiting old shenanigans. This is like three-year-old shenanigans here. <laughs> We're watching my uh, space elevator going through its cycle. Yes, yes, yes. So the, the space elevator here actually had to be separated into several different um, distinct pylons. Here, I'm going to go back up to it. Oh my god, these tunnels are so big. I, I, I literally tunneled through an entire mountainside. Woo! So, as you can see here... You see how there's this, how there's a, a, a grid thing, how it matches up? That is because if I remove a block, you can notice that these are tips touching. Just touch the tips. And what that means is that these grids don't connect. So the conveyor is one grid. This side is one grid, and this side is another grid. And both of these grids don't connect here. So this here, these uh, ramp up to here, is a separate grid than this. <laughs> and so, yeah, everything is a separate grid up here. Because I could not make all of the towers bits all on the same grid together because once you get that big once you get past like 20 kilometers long and you have th like several thousand blocks your grids lose um collision and you can literally walk through your grids and what was happening was while i was building this i'd get to a certain height and then my my inchworm thing that was building it would just fall over because it tried to grab onto the grid using like landing gear or connectors or whatever it was and it would just not be able to do it because the grids physics didn't load anymore because they were so big <laughs> it was ridiculous but yeah we're we got 24 fps when we're live streaming and uh loading this giant grid if I look away from the grid, if I look into the ground, I get all my FPS back. And it pops back up to like 40 something. <laughs> but my sim speed's still one. <laughs> go, go, sim speed. Hey, I'm almost back. So, for this last bit here. As it's coming down, what's going to happen is at, at some point, 
there is a um you can see down here there's these spikes pointing in so those spikes are going to trigger uh sensors and those sensors are going to change the properties so now it is no longer powering itself down but it is now on full stop full break and it is slowly descending the last 100 meters or whatever it is. Uh, did you have to abandon the save because your FPS was crawling? Yes, but I have a better computer than back then. I have a much better computer than I had uh, back when I did this season originally. I ran this season on a GTX 1060. Now I have a 2080. So, I'll, like, my, I have a... I have an entirely brand new computer from when I did this first season. I Way better stuff. <laughs> At least I think I have a better computer. It hasn't been that long since I upgraded my machine. But look at that. I think it takes about 10 minutes for this thing to come down. But it's going to dock in on those wheels there. And come in for a landing. And then what you can do is you can come over here. And you stand right here. And the little airlock door extends out. And then you can walk across. And you are on the, uh, the ground. And what you can do is you can see this thing is perfectly aligned for you to uh, switch lock the connector and now the orbital elevator is docked and it can recharge because the orbital elevator runs on batteries so you need to dock it up and then it's going to recharge and it'll be good all right let's head down the shaft as our giant uh <laughs> Our giant sundial keeps ticking. I get all my FPS down here. I get into my 60 FPS. That's until I turn the corner here and start looking around. And then it's like, what? Ah, right, let's go this way first. This is a giant dock that I never, ever used all of the uh, space for. I have three things in here in this giant room. When I initially came down here from orbit, this is where I landed. I made up a little temporary base, which I still haven't removed yet, because that's just me. And I made a few little ships, like this little rover, to get around the, the surface. And I... Yeah, used the drill and fills to drill out this entire area. And this is my little welder, using old hinges as well, all really old stuff. And it would drive along with a bunch of steel plate and use that to weld up all of these floor pieces. That's until I got really, really tired of doing that and, and did uh, um, nanobot build repair. Here is the starter ship from this season, the jump jack. This is what I started the entire build with. And it's still here and it's still good. And then here's my little blue rover that I used to get around the base if I wanted to. Which we can go and steal. And let us go out to the um, air control tower first, which this thing should trigger. And notice that I'm here. And the elevator should come up. Yep, elevator is on its way. Oh, God. The uh, As the elevator arrives, the little airlock doors go down. And we can park. Oh, yeah, we have to drive up to this one to make it go. Yep, there we go. And these are the better elevators. These ones go way faster and properly slow down and stop at the different floors. These ones are operated by a script by DF Percussions again. And then I can head down this uh, tunnel. 
Uh, this is the season I started watching videos. I didn't remember until I seen the air control tower. Yeah! Wait, we're, it's uh, the 50,000 sub special, so we're reminiscing for the entire time here. Do like three hours of reminisce of uh, old times. Uh, this is season two. But I gotta go through my underground tunnel in order to reach the, uh, the base over here. Uh, this was a tunnel that didn't get finished, but this goes off all the way underneath the ice lake until some resource patches. And I was going to build a tunnel out to the resource patches, but I never did. All the elevator. I just gotta wait. I'm just going to turn off the uh, FPS counter. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, something over here didn't like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, come up through here to the uh, air control tower. It's, it's okay. I want to want you guys to look at something. Do you notice that this is slightly off, right? This is slightly leaning to the right, right? That is because. This entire thing is one grid. And we are so far away from the beginning of the grid that the gravity angle has changed. <laughs> the curvature of the planet has changed. And so this entire building is slightly off kilter. <laughs> uh, go through security here. Go through the scanner. Beep, beep, beep. I has got a gun on him. Ah. Uh, this is a lobby. I never finished it. Again, this is like the common theme for a lot of my shit. Is I never finish my builds. But here comes the uh, another clanging elevator. Come on. Come on, elevator. Where are you? Don't try to close on me. So we got lobby, we can go to the lounge. <laughs> and we can head on in. Nice lounge here. Uh, could use a lot more color and a lot more design. But nice little squirreled away bathroom here. And another bathroom here. Overall, not too bad. I'm really starting to drop frames, though, now. <laughs> uh, utility! This elevator is smooth as heck. Wow, this is a nice elevator. Uh, utility had nothing in it except some programmable blocks. And a timer. And control. Season you started watching and subbed? Nice! And control! And this is where you would sit and report animal oh, little ships. You gotta, you know, whether or not you can go in certain places and stuff. And, uh... Radar access. Yeah, you go to the control, you press radar access, then you get in and you wait a few seconds and then it sends you up to the radar. So that way normal people can't get to radar without going to control first. So that way it's the uh, sort of secret f top floor. Yeah, yeah, there's blue screen issues. I mean, this is an old save. And then up here we just got some interior turrets. And... Uh, Somewhere along here, one of these things is a staircase. Ah, oh, no, yeah, the ladder. And then we have the uh, 
the radar tower. The entire thing's spinning, including the ladder. So you gotta get on the ladder, you can come inside, there's a battery there, and there's the radar tower. Which I think looks really good, and it's just wiggling up and down and such. <laughs> it's steer your turrets. Yep. Yeah, I like the overall shape of this building. I think the shape is really nice. Um, it, it's interior could use a lot of work. But then we got four, four pads here. So if you're coming in to land with your little ship, you could say, please proceed to gr landing pad green, landing pad red. Welcome to kind of Joshi base, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, the, uh, the, the solar tower is out. We'll get to that soon. I think that's our next stop here after the uh, broken elevator. And so we'll teleport ourselves back into the little cart and we'll get on driving. First ep episode you saw of the channel was the last episode of this season. Nice. One sec. I'll go back. She's back in her bed. There we go. Doggo cam activated. All right, let's head off to the. Oh uh, wait, we gotta ride an elevator. I forget. I forgot this elevator was here. Do this all in first person. Ah, cooperative with Angie Man Gaming was so good. I loved that series. I'm, 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 I'm going to do another thing with Angie Man because he's an awesome guy and I love playing with him. So, at some point we will do another thing. Yeah, thanks for the congratulations. These are impressive builds for a solo player. Yes, I had a lot of time on my hands. I played a lot. I played a lot more of this game back at this time when I was making this season. I don't play nearly as much these days because I got other games and, you know, a lot more life to deal with. Uh, did you see about Warframe yet? I don't know what you mean about see about Warframe. What about Warframe? I do play Warframe all the time. I make sure to log in every day to get my daily login. <gasps> And we're here, and we look up. Oh, and what's that above us? Is that a solar tower of wonder? Uh, wasn't this season the height of pandemic? I think it was. <laughs> I think this was, like, the beginning of COVID. Oh, my God, this thing is twisted. <gasps> it's twisted. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, War from 1999. Yeah, I saw the, um, I saw the announcements and stuff. I'm gonna wait until that comes out, and it'll be good to see. Um, can I retract this? <laughs> uh, anyway, this is the Solar Tower script, the old version. Before this is before you could just put a. Uh, a uh, custom turret controller and have it do this kind of thing. Uh, were these tunnels created with the modded drills? They were created with the drill and fill mod. Yes. And this whole thing would uh, retract start. I forget if I need to align it myself or if it automatically aligns. Ah, well, it doesn't matter. Let's see what happens. Ooh. I want this thing to not explode. So I'm going to give it a quick rotation here. Oh, 
grid. <laughs> okay, it's gonna explode. It's gonna explode. Ah, that's okay. It can explode. <laughs> It's not retracting properly. It's not retracting properly. Uh, uh. And now the lid's going to start closing in a second. Because it, it needs to get fully inside and then the lid would close. <laughs> yeah, here comes the lid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just extend this thing again then. Oh, okay. So, yeah, this thing's a little warped and broken. That's unfortunate. But I loved this thing, man. Go back and watch the actual episode of this thing. So you can see it properly for unfurling and... Uh, and, uh, packing away. Oh, this thing was great. Ah, oh, man. I miss it. Too bad it's broken now. And then we can come out here. And we're on the outside! One of the many exits to the base. Uh, this is a minor exit, though. Wasn't really anything around here. The uh, industrial base is over there, but we'll get to that. We'll, we'll, we'll drive the highway. Now we can go to one of the next elevators! Uh, when was this thing built? Uh, this was like... 2000? Wait, when was this series? When was this season? 2000 and 2001, I think. Okay, because 2024 is Into the Dark. 2023 was season, like, Agris at War. 2022 was the Drive Around Pertam. So this was like 2021. This is season two. That era. So yeah, this was like the height of the pandemic when I was building this shit. At home all day, every day. <laughs> when I was building this, Sasha didn't exist yet. <laughs> Uh, yo, know, season four, Agoras, was Waterworld. Season four went on for a little too long, though. <laughs> it went on for like a year and a bit. It was way too long. I should try to keep my uh, seasons to like nine months. Nice gestation time. God, these tunnels are long. Never got second to the quarantine and then caught it. Same! Oh my god! I went through the entire quarantine and I successfully dodged it. And then we started going back to work and stuff. And then it was like, up, oh, yep, here's your COVID. And I'm like, fuck! Hopefully this elevator doesn't explode while I'm on it, but, uh, should be alright. And we're up on the surface again! And there is a still, <laughs> again, temporary Conveyorage set up. Oh god, all oh, those buildings. Oh, that's so cool. Steep ramp down. Don't want to go too fast. But this is... A museum of sorts. 
I think it was built by somebody. Was it built by Priya? I cannot remember. Built by somebody. Like, designed by them, I built it in here. You come in here, you go through, you buy your ticket to see the kind of Joshi Museum. You come on in. The original goal was... Oh, right, there's a, there's a turret from Zion, from Season 1. And the goal was to put the the jump jack in here. And it would be sitting right here as a display. But I never got around to it. <laughs> and then over here, we had a globe. A nice planetarium thing all spinning around. Nice glass room. And then we had the... Uh, had some mech warrior stuff. And then we had some weeb shit. <laughs> Fucking Nekopara, Senko-san, uh, Uma Musume, and uh, Felix. <laughs> oh yes, and if you know, one of these things is not like the other. One of these things doesn't belong. And if you know, you know. But yeah. That was a little museum that I think I think Pariah built this. He designed it and I built it. Senko, my beloved. Senko is good. And if we don't know, you I don't know if you want to. It's an inside joke for those who do know. <laughs> And off along the highway here. I mean, it's, it's it's not like it's a secret or anything, but one of those um, nice, cute uh, anime girls is not a girl. <laughs> Just so you know. Uh, what's the name of the series so I can watch? Uh, which one? Like, these are from Nekopata, which is the <laughs> ad adult video game. This is from uh, Senko san. Uh, can't remember what the proper title is for it. Uh, <sighs> whatever it is, it's Senko. She's a uh, Shows up at a middle-aged uh, office worker's life and uh, heals him with motherly-style love and such. It's just a fluffy, nothing-really-happened show. And this is Uma Musume, which is horse girls, these four. And then this is from ReZero. So yeah, those are the ones. <laughs> and off to the city! Ah, which we have to follow the traffic lights. Oh, we got a green light. Oh, wait, wait, I want to watch it. I want to watch it cycle. We have a green. Well, it's turning yellow. We got to stop. Oh, my God. We got to... We can't go into the... To, ow! Ah, it's red. We can't go forward on the red. You gotta stop. You gotta wait. You gotta wait. And we can go. <laughs> Alright, park up there. And we have the giant city building. Rover thingy. Oh man, this thing was awesome. Giant. Oh, look at this arm, man. Oh. Huge nested pistons. All the way up into the sky. With nested pistons to the side. With this giant printer head with like... 
50 welders slowly spinning and it was enough to print these buildings off although it missed look at all the blocks it missed oh my god and here I am gritting out more base like to build more structures oh man <laughs> Yeah, it didn't make many, uh, this is probably the coolest one. We didn't make many structures, but the ones we did were pretty good. It's all, all rusty, though. And again, you can see how this one, if I stand here, you can see how it's slightly tilted to the other direction. Because this has started to be really far away from the, from the origin of the grid on the other side. And so it's starting to tilt. <laughs> but I really like this sort of open core with all the, uh, the staircases and such. Uh, but each of the rooms is a duplicate of itself. Yeah, it's very Judge Dread. I, I, I can see that. Uh, but other than that, we do got like the Empire State sort of building. We've got the H two building. Uh, whatever's in this thing, I think these are just blank floors, right? Yeah, these are just all blank floors. So there's not really anything in these buildings. They're just meant to be set pieces yeah no wonder the city's abandoned yeah ah oh, man I should have done something better with this series this season like the, the these uh buildings too much <laughs> ah well Let's plunk ourselves back at the rover here. You giant building printer of a thing. And let's continue on our drive. We only got a couple more stops on our adventure in this uh, in this season of reminiscing. And then we're on to season three. Got our little elevated highway here. Gonna be coming up on our wind farm and our industrial district as well as I believe an airport I'm not sure if that got finished I think the airport over there is not completely finished yeah I mean this this save is probably at its at its limits in terms of the amount of PCU and shit I have floating around I could probably build a way better city if I had built it with like, instead of like 20, 30, whatever, uh, like whatever those were giant skyscrapers. If I had built stuff that was like 10 or less stories, but built a lot of them and like fully flushed them out, it probably would have looked way better. Like, for example, this area, this is all, although I didn't really design this, I sort of just stuck it together. This is, um, oh god, what is his name? Hull Tech. Hull? He, he makes some pre-built uh, things on the workshop, and I just took several of his designs and stuck them all in one spot. So these are all just different workshop items that I you can see how there's like the line between them here I just line them all up and built them all together and there's the wind farm but this is my sort of industrial district I think it worked out quite nicely between these two uh, low hills oh yeah and there is a uh, um, paver mark 2 that was used to make these highways Jesus Christ. Almost lost control of my rover. Yeah, there was a design for it. Somebody submitted like an airport looking thing over here. And I just never got around to building it. 
You can see both the blueprints out here. Be a whole airport. Offices and everything, and then landing pads, and it looked good. Never got around to finishing it. Alright, that is essentially this... This planet. This save. Uh, right, another thing that I never got around to finishing, because I never, like, I just didn't have the time and ran out of stuff for this season, was that I was going to put a bunch of drones coming out of here, and this was going to be called, like, the Beehive or whatever it was called. And... Uh, I was going to build a tiny little cabin right here to look overlook everything. Hey, this is, yeah, this is, hey, it's DF for Kush, my coding man. You are amazing, man. Yes, this is season two. We're reminiscing. We are just pure reminiscing mode right now. But yeah, that is it for this season in terms of everything that I built. Uh... Yeah. Thanks, man. You thanks for all of the uh, work that you did over the years on making scripts for me. Uh, what's the name of the episode? This world season. This was built in. This is all season two. I can't remember the individual episode names, but if you look in my playlists, there is season two, and you should be able to find it. All right, that's season two. That took like. Well, that took like over an hour to go through season two. Jeez. <laughs> there is a lot there. Oh, let's go to season three, which is going to be way less um, stuff because I specifically went, um, wow, that was a lot of building. I do not want to do that again for the next season. I want to make something small. And I want to live in it. I want to really, I want to really live in my grid which oh, oh the clang temple oh my god how could i forget we're loading season two again how could i forget the clang temple we need to go to the desert we have to go to the desert <laughs> lord of all time thank you for reminding me uh this will take a minute to load but when I was done season two, I was like, okay, that was a lot of building. I'm pretty done with building. I want to be more um, intimate with my grid. I want to really focus on designing a lived in space. I want to make it very utilitarian and lived in and like that. And so I ended up going through the entire thing of like, I want to just be one grid the entire season. Uh, Doug aboard or tired, a uh, combination of both. She is both tired from all of her running at the park this morning. <gasps> yes, we went to the park and we played with balls as she perks her head whenever I say those words. And also she's bored because I'm not paying attention to her and she hates it when I don't pay attention to her. And now she's like, Oh my God, he's just, he's baiting me in with just the, the words that I, I, I know she loves, but I'm not actually giving her any attention. Yes, you're a good girl, Sasha. Anyway, she is um, like three quarters, two thirds German Shepherd. Her backstory is that she is the offspring of a, her mom was purebred certified German Shepherd show dog. And her dad was the neighbor's shepherd mutt that, jumped the fence and whoops puppy and uh so then she they they weren't pure like pedigree shepherd but they were good enough for me and i got her pretty cheap because of that all right we have to go to the desert it's over here <gasps> there it is there's the temple of clank oh with the mobile field base <laughs> it's over here too This stupid thing. I totally forgot this stupid thing. 
Oh god, the Temple of Clang looks so fucking good. <laughs> I gotta rebuild that. I gotta rebuild that at some point. But yeah, mobile field base. Has the four landing spots. Meant to just land somewhere and then build off of it. And then we have the... Oh my god, this looks so good. I need to, um... I need to screenshot this. Oh, I should have built this? Oh my god, did I not think of it? Yeah, I need to go back and rebuild this, but build it in a way that the... the sun rises directly behind it. I need to reorient this thing so the sun is right behind it. Okay, I'm gonna frame up here. I think I gotta find the right time of day. Night looks cool. But also... That gives some good shadows. That gives some really good shadows. We'll get some screenshots here. It's been a while since I've been here. We have the little sub temples over here. We've got these obelisks. I mean, even by themselves, the obelisks are really cool because they're using this, um, like, nano, whatever the hell was the, um, skin in order to make it look like it's writing. So that would be amazing with some kind of half moon shape or ring for the sun to peek through. Yes. That sounds amazing. Nighttime looks better. Okay, we'll go get another screenshot at nighttime. We'll be let's let's pull it in a little bit. Right there. We'll grab a daytime shot again. And then without moving, we'll grab a nighttime shot. Yeah, the damage thrusters its torches is so smart. Although we could probably make something better these days. Yeah, I can use exhaust blocks now. This is like old school make things look cool. <laughs> and then we can climb. We can climb. And head on inside the Tower of Clang. Uh, right, I can go through here. This is all just empty space in here. Kind of want to do something with it, but again, ran out of time, ran out of C like, um, CPU on this thing. Um, raise. Oh my god, I love this thing. How it's opening. It opens like up a flower petal. It's so nice. And it's so jiggly though. I gotta change that. I could probably get rid of that with some uh, inertial dampeners these days. And then you would throw the sacrifice into the grinding pit. And it would get ground up to, to nothing, except little bits on the ground. And then, uh, rotors. I can't remember if this actually rotated if I had inertia tensor on. Uh, close. These would rotate back into position. You can see how they have the the little things over. 
in order to cover the gaps. And as they come down, they would cover each other's gaps. That covers that one's gap, that covers that gap, and that covers these two gaps. And then it would make a nice solid surface with the little, uh, little bit in between like that. Oh, the Temple of Klang. Yeah, I needed to... If I had rotated this 90 degrees and set it up so that the sun rose right there and the, this was set up this way and so the sun would peek out right, right over top of it, it would be perfect. But unfortunately, I wasn't that smart back in those days. Okay, now we're done with this save. <laughs> Now we're done with season two. Oh, off to season three. Oh. Oh. Season where I revisit all your past ideas. Oh, that's an interesting concept. I don't, are we done with season two? Are we though? I don't know. Probably not. But that's probably enough for season two. Season two was a big season, but we need to move on. We still have like, we still need to get through season three. We get through Agoras at War, and we need to get through Escape from Mars, and then take a look at Into the Dark. <laughs> All right, season three. Uh, let's see if it um, functions, or if its mods are dead. There was way less mods here. And that means less opportunity for them to be broken, which means we might just be able to, to load season three. Um, but I think I still will make a copy. Nothing's broken. Yay. Got to go to work. Well, yeah. It's all good, man. Go to work. Oh, just call it fixed, because that's what we're doing with the other one. And I'll see you later. Oh, hey, doggy. You going to move around now? Hi, girly girl. Always a girl. Always a Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Oh, good girl. What you... Did you want things, Sasha? Did you want love? Did you want love? Are you a lover girl? Are you a good girl? Are you a lover duck? Good girl. Sasha, don't stand there. All I can see is your butt. Come on, move your head over here. And then they can stare into your eyes. Boy's <laughs> a puppy. Boy's a puppy. Boy's a puppy. What are you staring at me for? What are you staring at me for, Sash? <laughs> Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. She just wants love. At, at the end of this, you should show your face. My face is already on the channel. You just have to search for it. <laughs> yeah, I've made a video like um, 2018, I think, 2017, where I had my computer break and I was like, hey, I'm making this video on my phone. Um, I don't have a computer for the next month. Sorry, no videos. It's out there already. You just guys gotta go sh search for it. Yeah, I s that that is actually my in real life friend, and I saw him this morning. <laughs> hey, season three, Master Don, Master Don, love you. Right, <laughs> have no Jack this season. <laughs> 
Yeah. Ah, okay. This is one of my favorite things about this uh, whole thing. Uh, hangar door reverse. These aren't labeled very well. Ah, here we go. Hey, there we go. Yeah, yeah, we're going to Japan this fall. I'm going with him, so. Um, we'll probably do some uh, Japan travel vlogs or something. Sasha, don't lick your own. See, I'm actually really, really proud of this rover. I think it's one of my best creations ever. As it breaks. <laughs> oh my god. Why does it always happen to me? Why is it always live when it happens? God damn it. Oh, there we go. Doggies. They're relaxing. The timing. I know the timing is perfect. It's been a, such a great stream. <laughs> but even so, even with the, the stupidity of this thing breaking itself every so often, I really like this sort of nest nested piston with the um, the gratings going sliding over top. And so that allows it to be in one nice smooth service. Ah, uh, it's so nice. Uh, we've got the... The bison in here with its stupid little wings, which... <laughs> that was so stupid. <laughs> Making this thing fly. Uh, we come in. We got our way up to the top. We got our way around here in the back. You got access to everything. Because remember, I didn't have jetpacks, so I needed to be able to get around to every single thing and get access to them. We have we have old timey uh, PDCs. Yeah, Doggo forgot where her bed was. Is Master on the workshop? Mm, no, I never put it on the workshop. Season three is on the workshop, I believe. So you can just go and download season three and load it yourself and get the master on. We got a little thing here sticking out for the little back thrusters. We can come up here and there's the, uh, the large A sentry. Again, this is pre easy um, rotor turrets. So, um, we had to have this designator turret here in the center to be able to run the turret. Got our little grinder pit. I still remember when there was an unknown signal coming down and we caught it in the grinding pit as it was coming down and I felt very proud of myself. Uh, we have our lightning rod, which has a active welder beside it. And so that this would get struck by lightning and then they would actively get welded as it got struck, which made me very, felt very safe. We've got our little drone ships, our cyclops, and our, what are you? The gopher, right. Again, another welder on a, um, oh, Lightning rod, and these are on pistons, so they can uh, piston up, and uh, be have that little bit higher elevation, so that they're always the ones getting hit by lightning. But all of our our buildings and uh, oh, our connector is uh, burning. <gasps> oh, I'm gonna hurt. I didn't have jet. We got our little raven here. Our little remote control plane, man. This thing was awesome. We would take this little thing up and we'd fly it forward and we'd scout out our route and then we'd come back and we'd leave it somewhere and we'd have it as like an icon, like a, a like an antenna on the horizon so we could see which way we want to drive. And then eventually we'd Recharge. 
I love the fact that we got through this entire series with like five grids. And that was it. Uh, here. I, oh God, the floor is buckled. Oh no. Uh, we've got our food resequencer, recycler, hydroponics. That was all of our daily needs stuff. Our, uh, my mic audio is breaking up. It is? Oh, that's not good. Hopefully it's okay now. Let me know if it doesn't fix itself. Um, I might need to... Oh, it's fine now. Okay, good. There's our refineries, all of our storage, which we just had everything in here. Oh, I have some burger fries on me. And we come up here to the cockpit. It's probably just because there's all this stuff that I'm loading and such. Um, hangar dock reverse. Lightning rods reverse. Ah, there we go. That's what I would do when there was a storm. Raise up those lightning rods a little bit so that they're the ones that get hit. And then bring them down to get them repaired. Uh, yeah. See, with this season, there's not many grids to go through. But what there is to go through is reminiscing about the root. See, now it's doing it? Okay. That's weird. Um, I don't know how to fix that. Unless I just, like... Stop and restart the stream real quick, maybe. I don't know. It should come back. Yeah, yeah we should be back. I'm seeing myself moving around on my own stream. Hopefully that fixes something. Anyway. Uh, we went this direction. As you can see, all of my different ore nodes that I found and mapped out. Helios. Oh, right. It's a crash ship. So we drove along here. We drove along here. We went up this ridge line. We dug into the ground over here for something. Where was it? Uh, something in this hill. Magnesium, that's what we dug into the ground for. Yeah. I dug a little tunnel down to magnesium. And then we came up here and we got our mountain oasis, which was our first waypoint. Then I continued. And if you notice something, the similarities here is because this, uh, this route is essentially the route that uh, we took for the Pertam Rally, which I'm going to change up this year. There's going to be a different route. Got a little dragon's tooth. Love this little thing out in the middle of nowhere. Just a random spike. And we continue it along this way. Got some more ores. Got some more stuff. And then, was it, where, where was it? Is it here? here yes this place uh most of it's been deleted by now but uh this was one of the first major um places that i ran into this was when i was with the bison and a trailer and getting to here was great because this was my first real power um input because everything else was just running on ice and i was like uh I don't really want to be constantly running on ice. I would like to charge my batteries all the way. And we ran into this thing, and there was an entire base here that we had to clear. But we managed to do it, and we parked ourselves here, and we plugged in, and we got a bunch of resources. And there was a little ice node over here. 
and that we d dug a fair amount of ice on and we recharged our tanks and our batteries and uh, did all that. And then we went back not across there. No. Yeah, I think we went back across there and then we continued uh, driving this direction. So more driving, more driving, more driving. We're going to rotate the sun because I want it to be daytime. We'll make it the uh, sun's coming up over there. Uh, was anything else significant in this direction? Again, just more ice. Another canyon that I need to get across here. God, look at all these friggin' signals. It's ridiculous. All right, the river delta. We got these. You can see, obviously, it was some sort of river coming this way, and it spreads out and goes into what would be an ocean basin. And this is this river delta. It came up through here. Right, this is the missile area. So there was this oasis over here. And I sat here and I did a bunch of building and experimenting and I dug out some ice. And then I went over this ridge and this ridge and got through here somehow. And then up on this area here, I sat here and experimented with missiles and trying firing missiles at this um, pirate station. And there, this was a huge pirate station, like an absolutely giant one. But I went through it and ripped it, I like, defeated it, of course, took it over, ripped it to shreds, and turned it into the bison, not the, the mastodon. It was just a, it was just literally a platform with wheels to start with, with some storage on it, and we continued on with the large grid. We kept going this way. We ran into another station thing here. We uh, connected it up to the uh, the Mastodon. We stripped this of useful parts. Yeah, I think I got all the useful parts out of this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, then continued on this way. I built my first bridge. Bridged across here. Came along here, came along here, and then went back north because I noticed this station in the distance and wanted to take it over. And so I took the long way and I went all the way around the ridge line here so that I could get an easy drive down to it because that ridge line was too steep for me. And I defeated this base and I drove right up to it and connected into this connector right here. And siphoned everything from the space. Got everything I needed. And then right back up the hill. And uh, continued on through this desert. Continued on this way. Uh, I can't remember any particular events that occurred here. Just going through the desert. I think there was like some grids or whatever off to the side. Uh, I think. I think it was here. Right here that I, I mantled up. This is where I installed the thrusters onto it. So that it could have some more thrust to weight ratio. Because it was simply not able to make it up hills anymore. It was starting to get too heavy the grid. Like the, the Mastodon. And so it, it's, it's just its wheels couldn't get up the hills anymore. So I added the th hydrogen thrusters in the back and I was able to power my way up this hill. And we made it to the North Pole, which was the next waypoint. We grabbed an ore deposit there and we started heading this direction to go south. Uh, I can't remember. I don't think there was anything special here not that I remember tempted jumps over the ravine of the live stream yeah that was fun ah here there was a grid over on this side somewhere 
I can't remember what type of base it was, but there was a base over here that we attacked. I remember right here there was a base. I have no idea where it went now, but it was it was it was I remember I remember being right here and the thing sending drones at me and the Mastodon shooting down the drones and I was keeping this large rock between me and the enemy base, which was like over here. Um Yeah, it's deleted now, but wherever it was, it was there. And then we kept going this way, another oasis, so that we could uh, regenerate some... I can't remember if we regenerated ice there or not. Because it doesn't look like I've touched it. And then it was up into the desert. And just an easy drive across the desert. Get some ores, some more ores, nickel. Keep driving this way. Um, there was a base on top of this hill. No? No. Am I going crazy? I think I'm going crazy. Cobalt there is magnesium, and I had to weave my way through these mountains. So I went up and over. Yeah, I went up and over here. I drove down here. Oh, God. I'm just, I'm, I'm just remembering all this stuff from this drive. And then it was across this desert. This is another one where I set it onto, like, auto drive and then just went and did other stuff while, my, while I drove. Then up and over this stuff and then across this other section of desert until we got to this dried lake which I can't remember if these have ice underneath them I think they do yeah no that was a magnesium deposit or something yeah well we grabbed a few pieces of ores here and we continued on this way for our next bridge which we actually built up a little bit and then we kept going, kept going. Not a lot of stuff happening here. A lot of more driving. Got a little, some good distance in. Another large piece of uh, uh, desert. But then we had this, which we stopped and siphoned a bunch of resources out of, which was very good. We got a full fuel up of our hydrogen tanks, if I remember correctly here. And we used the gopher to get a bunch of iron. And then we continue going this way. Uh, somewhere along here. I think it's very shortly is the spot where I ran over the gopher. It's shortly here. Aha! Here, here's another thing. Another wreck, which we uh, got some stuff out of. And then a plateau oasis up here, which we put the thrusters on the bison pointing downwards. So that we could climb up the walls here, which was very fun. And then we, this, I believe this is where we started using the little um, blackbird thing to uh, scout the way. That's where we really started using it and built it. So it flew all the way across here and it scouted this area out and found that, oh, I can go... Um, uh, which way was it? I can go all the way across this desert. And I can get across over here to the South Pole. So I went to the South Pole. And I got the Qatar here. This this wreck. Got some parts out of it. And then from the South Pole. Uh, where the fuck did I go? Wait, that's where I came from, isn't it? Or is this my route? I have a severe lack of uh, markers here. But this is my... This was 100% my approach to the South Pole. And this has to be my exit. Because that's where I am currently is there. You know, right there. So, and then I went this way. Did I go this way? No, this is my approach. I'm totally lost here. Oasis, oasis. Wreck of the Hermes. 
and that I didn't make many things until I was going this direction. And there's a good setup here. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting lost. Ah, another base that I uh, attacked and took stuff off of. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm getting back onto the route here. And Desert Plateau number three. Oh, what was... um South, South Pole 2. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. We're on the route. Desert Plateau 3. So this, I didn't take the Mastodon across. I went across with just the bison. I gl glided across and went and got my Desert Plateau and then came back and then continued on this way. Which then leads us into the canyon. Right, right, right. Here we go. Then we go through the canyon, the same route that we did for the uh, the race. And we go through the entire canyon, all through here, all through here. Another couple of oases to refuel. There was a base up here, which I think is despawned now. And uh, then at the end of the canyon, zip -do 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 -da day over here. There or one of these things. I built a ramp to get out, but I think I might have despawned because I didn't power it. Yeah, somewhere there. And then it was a easy waypoint peninsula there. We just had to get across, which if I remember correctly, was this my one that I jumped across? Maybe it was. And then we kept going this way, kept going this way, and then we were in the final stretch. We were almost home. And we, uh, the Badlands, number six, right here. And then the starting point, right around here. That was the entire route of season three. So much happened in that. So much happened in that season. But I really enjoyed it. I think season three is probably my favorite solo season because it was just living in this little rover and just doing what I could do it was good stuff uh, there isn't really anything else with season 3 because it was so self-contained and so relatively small so we could move on to season 4 but yeah the goal well yeah, the goal was never to escape Pertam. It was just to do the the loop. Uh, we have season four. Which we have several season fours. We have the oh this is like this is old man, this is old stuff. It's gonna be good. The Mastodon, the Mastodon wouldn't be big enough for an um, industrial overhaul. There's just too many logistics and um, blocks that you just need. Like, too many refinery things. It just wouldn't fit. Mm. Good, nothing's broken. Okay, let's load it. So this is old Agress of War. So I started Agress of War. I went for a duration. Then the game updated and it borked. And I thought it wasn't recoverable. So I had to make a new copy of it. And then load in my stuff. Like my, my ship that I was building. And sort of guesstimate how much resources I had. But then later on, they fix the mods, and the old save is fixed, and it works. And so we have the the old thing before I had to do that update, and we have the end of the new one, which is me actually at the my big base that I had built. So we'll look at the old one first.
Oh, it's getting warm in here. I gotta take off my sweater. I'm just taking off my sweater, dog. What up? Here. I'm gonna see a flying sweater. <laughs> Why are you running away, dog? Yeah. Ah, I got across the room. Not on my bed where I wanted it, but just across the room. I just took off my sweater. What's wrong, puppers? Go to your bed. Go to go to bed. It's okay, girl. She's like, I don't know what's happening. He's stripping. <laughs> Sasha, go to bed. Get your Tritos if you want. There we go. A doggo eating things. Oh my god, this is such an old freaking save. It's so old. Oh, we're on the Discovery, the original Discovery. We have the, oh my god, my original Wave Skimmer. I don't think this Discovery even floats anymore. Because it's using the old, um, is it? Is it using the old buoyancy blocks or is it actually using the new water 3.0 buoyancy by having a locked and pressurized thing but yeah because this this is not sealed yeah yeah totally this was it was built using the old buoyancy things the buoyancy blocks see how this is all yeah this these wouldn't float anymore <laughs> Thoughts on Splizzies and Blackshot's pronunciation of Agarus? I don't care. You can pronounce it however you want. Uh, I will test it at the end here. I'll cut these off and we'll see. But we've got our little starter base with our wind turbine going into the, uh, the ground here, which is beautiful. All of our food production are coming down. I think this is, this is fun. Coming down here to a little refinery, like an assembler. That was a nice little sneak in there all of our production here we got our little cargo container fucking dro rover running on hydrogen tanks god I love this thing all of our H2O2's here in the water getting me power our dock that doesn't float anymore that used to. <laughs> our underwater dock here for hiding our wave wave rider when we just started. Oh man. All the wind turbines. All the different uh, like one of each production blocks that I could get all the items. Fill up this boat to take him with us. I, I I don't think this thing would float anymore, but this thing would 100% fly. Then we had our bunker over here, which doesn't have any guns on it anymore, because I think the guns have been removed. Or they've been changed somehow, and this was my... There was like a... an assert base over there that was like beating the shit out of me, so I needed to have a bunker. <laughs> and we got the... Uh, old solar tower here just slurping in the sunlight and the pipeline going all the way over here to a giant drill rig that was just to get me a bunch of iron and stone and 
Yeah, and there's the roads there. There's the silicon mine over there. Wasn't the end of the season, was it? Remember slightly different? No, this was the mid-season um, hiccup that I had. Because remember what happened was midway through the season, right when I was about to move bases, the game updated and everything broke. And so this was this old save that I thought was broken forever. But it turned out that they eventually fixed it and you could continue. But they... Um, but at that time, I faked it and just spawned in the ship and was like, well, this, it seems like everything's broken, but I want to continue making it like videos right away. So I'm going to do this and hopefully that's fine because I was going to leave here anyway and never come back. So it doesn't matter the, like this base has been deleted. I have my ship and I have an approximation of how much resources I had. So that was, uh, what happened in the end. Um, let's, uh, get this shit to sink. I need to make this into a... Yup, she sinks. I wonder if she'll float if I close her doors. Oh, doggo left. Now she's barking at the door wanting to go out because she's a dumb doggy. Uh, door! Close. Oh, doggo. I have to go deal with you in a second. All right, I have to go deal with Doggo. I'll be right back. The backyard. There we go. And kind of a picturesque with the ship sinking here. All right. Uh, might be that this isn't uh, airtight either. But I feel like if we make this airtight and we put in a vent somewhere in here, we should be able to get this thing floating. Yeah, as I suspected. These are causing issues. Let's just seal it. this thing. Whoa! Hello! <laughs> well, as soon as we uh, sealed it up, she floats. Floats quite nicely, actually. <laughs> She's kicking ass. 
sailing off into the sunset, sunrise? I can't remember which one it is on this side. I think it's sunrise over there. She's actually got a pretty good uh, draft there. Not too deep. Ah, now we're sinking again. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, that's a good way to leave that. <laughs> Let's go find the... Uh Oh, you lost your wingtip. Stupid thing. Ah, you'll be able to fly without it. I'm on. I'm on, big boy. Get up in the sky. Oh, okay. And use DF Percussion's script. Oh, God. No, it's not really working that well. Now it's stabilizing. There we go. Yeah, at least the wave skimmer survived. <laughs> anyway, that was this save for Season 4. Oh yeah, that that's probably an old version. That is the original version. <laughs> like super original version. Uh and then we can go to Oh god, which backup do I use? This is like end and end here. This is like the very end after a lot of stuff has exploded. I think this one is my base is still intact. Like, that is probably the, like, oh, God. Oh, shield. Right. The shield's in that one. <sighs> Joe, right before you opened up the artillery, um, this is probably the closest one I have to that. I don't know if I have a save where there was that enemy base still intact. I think the enemy base is pretty much destroyed in every single one I have. Sash is just out there sitting on the patio just borking at stuff. Just, but just like one bork and then she just sits there for th like two or three minutes and then does another one bork it's like she's a sonar and she's just putting out her little pings every so once in a while let's <laughs> see there's another bork she's a she's a silly girl she's a good borker Do, 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 do. I think this has my my base all together. There'll be a few things missing. There won't be a shield. There won't be a couple other things, but it should be fine. I don't think any major grids are going to like explode because I don't have those mods in there. Oh, she's at the back door. She wants in. Right back.
One Sasha. I gotta get the uh, doggo cam back on. There we go. We have a smoky beef recipe. Sasha, yeah. Ah, you lost it. You didn't catch them, Sasha. Sasha, that's it. Later. And catch. Good girl. All right, good girl. All right. Where are we here? We're on our... <sighs> yeah, the shield generator's gone. Although the Marauder's here, nice. And here's the Wave Diver, the new version of it. All cleaned up and sleek. And in here is, there is the Z-130, and there's the Canapache. There is the Canapache. God, love this thing. Okay, so for season four, Four, as I rearrange my chair because it got out of position there. Let me just plunk my butt down over here. We started off in this season on the other side of the planet. Over here. Where was it? That, 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 that. Where, oh, where did we start? Here. This is the, the, the beach that we started on. And then we did a whole bunch of stuff around here. Let me just move the, this. Let me just move this guy so we can actually see what we're doing. We did a whole bunch of stuff around here because we got plunked off in our wave, wave rider in this little bay by a Kopesh or something. And we made landfall. And then we got a bunch of resources nearby. I got some iron, got some other stuff. We did a nice big long drive over here and we drove way all the way up this road, grabbed some resources from a node that's right here. And we drove all the way, went across water and all sank. We went all the way up to a silver mine that was up here and drove all the way back doing some merchanting at the base. And and, um, yeah, season four, yeah, the scenario was on Steam. And we drove all the way back. The Not the end, but the beginning scenario should be on Steam. I don't know if it works anymore, but it's there. After we had uh, outgrown our little base here, we decided to leave on an adventure. And so we got into our little boats and we went off this way and we went all the way around the ocean and all the way across the sea and past all these different uh, pieces of land and all the way over to our current base, which is um, Rhinoceros Camp. Where are we? Here. This over here. Took us a while to get here, but we got here. Uh, time of day. There we go. Once we got here, we started setting up a base over here. We started off with a base down here, which is currently destroyed because it's not needed anymore. Oh, Sasha. Okay, you can be in the in the top left corner of the doggo cam. That's fine. And made a little dock, and we did some stuff down here, although it's all destroyed now. And 
we moved our way inland because this was one of the few places on the planets with oil sands. So we were getting oil. So we needed that to fuel all of our shit. So we set up our oil refinery plant and oh, our oil ref like oil like derricks like the the miners are gone. This entire th the grids over here are all deleted. Okay. But the oil refinery plant through industrial overhaul, got all that stuff down to these oil distilleries or whatever they're called and these giant oil tanks, which gives us essentially infinite power. Like there's just so much power can be done with this. And you can see like the new flaming blocks that we could have used in the last in like in season two that we just used, uh, burning thrusters for but to defend my gains defend my place I built a old style flak tower with uh, all of the cool weaponry on it got like 30 millimeters and sea whiz and 100 millimeters and 300 mils I can't remember what these are but big guns and to process all of the materials we built this refinery building with a bunch of every single different um, industrial overhaul structure and processing and storage and we just we could produce and manufacture absolutely anything here every single piece of industrial overhaul is in this one building uh, I never finished it because again I'm really bad at finishing my builds I just get it to a point that's functional that I never touch it again and to store all of my various aircraft. I have my my A-10 Warthog. And I have my AC-130 uh, transport ship. Which does have some turrets on it. Oh god, it's loud. Um, but it is mainly for transport. Although it is capable of fighting back if need be. Uh, mainly for defense. And then we have my kind Apache, which is entirely Klang powered, which is fun, and we'll fly that in a second. And then the Wave Rider turned into the Wave Diver as it turned into a submarine and was able to go down to the bottom of the ocean at the Platinum Node, uh, sorry, the Titanium Node, so I could get more titanium. And there was other resources, like there was a resource node over there, there was copper over here somewhere should be a copper tower yeah right here although this looks like it's yeah it's all broken because something attacked it but there's like there's several of these scattered throughout the the, the world here just collecting resources for me which is very useful um, there's a, just a ladybug just sitting up there and there's something else just sitting up here not the uh, moving at all just sitting there imposingly uh another thing we did is i went all the way all the way this way all the way to the desert let me move the, the, the sun and took out a base that was over here uh, uh this base And went into the desert on. I can't remember if I was on a rover of some kind. I forget what I did in the desert here, how I got in there, and how I battled things off. But I managed to uh, get this place, which was a. I can't remember the resource, but uh, I think it was lithium. This was lithium. Uh, lithium node. And I got infinite lithium. And then I went this way to the north with my marauder driving along I believe and I took out the gold base and I took the gold node and then we had infinite gold and then I did a bunch of flying around with my uh, C-130 brought all the resources back and then we went to the North Pole and took out the North Pole base and got a bunch of uranium from it and I remember there was like a grid around here somewhat that was like a bit of a story grid that I think Nat put there. I can't remember. It was somewhere on the, uh, the coast here. There was a grid that was like 
uh, a crash thing that had a a data pad on it that was like, oh yeah, this and this. That one was not me. It was somebody else. I, but it was the same sort of concept of what you were doing. But as it's dark here now, I'd love this landing pad. As you're coming into a land, you got the nice uh, green to show you which one to land on and the lights leading you in. Feels so good. We can make it uh, morning. And we can look at some of these uh, contraptions that I've made. Uh, I guess we can start here with the Count Apache. So Count Apache is the most fuel efficient ship, fuel low. ship that I have. Uh, doesn't matter that the uh, ship fuel is low. This thing doesn't take any power at all. Uh, we have six minutes. What's six minutes remaining? For for what? Like the grid? Of what? The gasoline engines are running. They're not putting out anything. Uh, I think it's just uh, being silly. That's all. But if we retract, where is my, it's my rotor, not my rotor, my uh, piston. I don't think I, uh, I don't think I had it on uh, my bar. Uh, why can I not get rid of that uh, thing? Okay. Uh, mag plates. There it is. Unlock. There you go. We can start wheeling out of here. And at some point, the, uh... The, the tether will break. And we will be disconnected from the base's power. Because we're too far. That's okay. We got tons of power. Because this thing doesn't take any power at all. Will the base be put on steam? I don't know. Probably not. Unless it's already there for some reason. And we will dampen her on. We will... Get into position, and we will activate our rotors. I can't remember what the setting was. There was a gyro that counteracted most of the turn. Ugh. This thing. No. Stupid kind of patchy. You're supposed to fly. You're supposed to fly normally. Yeah, we'll just turn it off. What happened with your gyro, dude? Gyro override. What happened? Does this roll need... This roll doesn't need to be minus 60, right? Is that what I was moving around here? Oh, yeah. I was moving these uh, a, a, f a lot. Come on. There we go. So, the one and two change the angle at which the rotors are cutting into the air. It's your collective. And that changes your vertical and your vertical lift. So, I think around a 
five or something was like neutral. And then you could tilt down, tilt down and collective up a bit, and you would start flying forward. Yeah, the auto scri autopilot script was the only reason I was maintaining my sanity in this season. Because if I had to manually fly all the cargo flights that I did, I would die. I would die internally. But yeah, kind of patchy here. It only has 15% battery, but it can fly for uh, eight days with his dampeners off. Because it's using a rotor, and that's it. So all this thing is doing to stay up is just a single rotor. No, wait. Three rotors stacked up, but it's only rotors. It's hardly anything. So we can drop this down to about a two or something, and that'll give me some downwards velocity. We can come in for a landing. thing is annoying to fly it's really cool and it's just a showcases what you can do with clang if you can you can make it bend to your will but oh it's also really annoying <laughs> but still it's like the coolest thing ever yeah it's using aerodynamics and just rotors you have to stack three of them on top of each other so that the rotors actually spin fast enough so that they create enough lift but it is theoretically it, like it is it is a helicopter like it is it is acting just like an actual helicopter would with spinning the rotors in order to create lift although this thing cannot um, auto rotate like a regular helicopter can so then we can we can set down we can cut the rotor speed. And then we're done. We're down on the ground again. So, kind of patchy, really cool, um, but super annoying to fly. I flew this from here, from this base, to the North Pole and back. It was like an hour of the most intense focus ever, and it sucked balls, and I never want to do that again. It was not fun. I'll oh, just park it there. Well, we have the AC-130, my favorite plane. Let's go. Oh, this thing's going to be loud as shit. Yeah. Preemptively, this thing's going to be loud as shit, so everyone, uh, you may want to... Um, plug your ears for this. Uh, pistons, AC-130 pistons, uh, reverse, mag plates, unlock. Start our rotation here. All right, ready to go. And then somewhere in here, we can just hit flight config. And the thing will automatically take off for us. As long as we're pointed down the runway. Uh, it'll automatically take off for us if we're pointed down the runway. Lift! Lift! There we go. There we go.
Um, we can upper speed. Wait, can I up my speed? Oh, why can't I go any faster? Oh, it's probably something to do with the settings on the world. Maybe I don't have enough top speed or the the uh, aerodynamic settings are changed. Uh, and also just get rid of this weather. Oh yeah, is it that loud? Oh god! Okay, sorry. Rip uh, headphones users. Sorry about that. But yeah, 130. I love this thing. I flew this thing absolutely everywhere. And, uh, D.F. Prakash, your script was the only reason I was able to do it. <laughs> As I slowly turn here by in incrementing my, uh, heading by five degrees at a time. What is coming for a landing? And then we can take up the, uh, uh, A-10. Because it is much quieter and much faster. But god damn, this thing was amazing. Th this plane was the workhorse for this season. Like, I could not have done this season without this plane. This, in th th this season hinged on the fact that I could do uh, cargo runs with this plane. Alright, we're going in. Coming on in, dropping down, lining up at the runway, flare right at the end, and touchdown. Uh, no, I never did end up setting up the landing script. I did set it up for a different runway, but I never set it up for this runway. <laughs> And honestly, I don't trust the, um, <laughs> this, this thing is a little unwieldy, the, the AC-130, so I probably wouldn't trust it anyway with the, uh, auto landing. I would do that for ship, for, for planes that had a bit more thrust away ratio. This thing, w like, when I came in, I was like, I was heavy and I was struggling to stay airborne, and so I needed to finesse it down. And a script might not be able to do that properly. Uh, and then they got the pistons, C-130 pistons, reverse. And they hold in place. Excellent. And then this guy, he's not even connected to the base because he is, um... Reactor powered. Pistons, mag. This thing's got 16 years of power, but that's because it's nuclear. Got a taxi out. Oh yeah, this is like heavy armor. Or I mean, you're talking about the C-130. And then once we're into position, we turn off the wheels, turn on the thrusters. And then this thing takes off like a dream. It's not too loud. My only hope was to be to make this thing so that it could um, pull its wheels in after taking off. That would be the only thing I'd love to do.
but we can get ourselves up. We can flatten ourselves out and then activate the autopilot and it can take over. Uh, yeah, the AC-30 had a uh, rocket assist to take off thing. Uh, where is that uh, rotary cannon? Mouse control. Oh, yeah, baby. Reload. <laughs> uh, where are my missiles? Ah, here we go. Ah, oh, I got no missiles. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, beyond this base. There is... I can't remember. Let's go see if the uh, artillery base is still there. Or even if it is there in the first place. We'll just let the ship... Uh, let it fly itself here. Uh, I don't know if the artillery base was built yet in this save. We might have to go to a future save for that. And there's the, uh, where is it? There it is. Flying across the sky. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it for this particular save. Uh, and so we can get out of here and go into the next save. Although there is the Marauder. So we can, um, you know, whatever. Just get rid of it for now. We're not going to, This is, we don't need to keep the saves information. But there is the Marauder here. This thing was awesome. Lots of good cannon on it. It allowed me to do some good damage to the enemy. Uh, again, it won't float anymore because I believe this thing was built... No, wait. This was built with the new f water in mind, if I'm not mistaken. Oh god, it's loud back here. Ah! Because the entire lower area is all sealed. If I'm not mistaken, this thing is also broken up into several different pieces. Yeah. Yeah, it's in different uh, blocks, so that way if one floods, the others don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This thing would float these days. Nice. Alright, so let's get out of the safe. Let's go look at another season four save. As the doggo has gotten back into her bed. Uh, so let's see. This is a scenario. So if you start the game, this is what you get. I intentionally added the bison there because the Wave Rider didn't really work anymore, and I didn't want to fix it because it was lazy. Uh, this backups here are 
during the final fight. Yeah. Um, this testing was me building various ships and such. But this was during the final fight. Let's see if there's any um, broken mods here. If not, we can load in on this one. Then after this, we can talk about, um, what is it? Yeah, there is a couple broken mods. Okay, I'm going to fix this one. V2 backup fixed. It's a problem with old saves, man. They, uh, they break. Oh, we can talk about, uh, the co-op adventure with Andrew Man, uh, Escape from Mars. What? I just fixed it. Strange. Did I actually fix what? Hey, out of there. Out of there. Now yeah, it's working. Didn't take. That's all. Just had to do it again. Good doggy woggy. Good girl, Sasha. Good girl. You are a good doggo. <laughs> As we load another really long loading screen. <laughs> uh. Good night, Brian. Thanks for showing up. As we wait oh, for loading. Oh, I mean, I'm going to load into my plane flying, so that's going to be interesting. Doggo doesn't know. we got over 100 people watching him. Yeah. Doggo doesn't know a lot of things. She doesn't know that she's an internet celebrity. Minor celebrity. Kind of just she's dog. Sasha. But she's a good girl. Oh, yeah, you're a good girl. <laughs> what apothecary did we finish on? Oh, like 20? Somewhere around there. 21? I don't remember. We missed like three so far. Ah, pull up, pull up. We're in combat. Inventory warning. Okay, whatever that means. Oh, it's shooting artillery at me. The v Valkyr the Valkyrie. The v Valkyrie. Whatever it is. Ah! ah! Somebody subscribed! Woo! Yeah, that's your ship. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna run and fly this way. And we're gonna take our, our spectator camera out. And oh, look at you! 
There's your ship! Trying to shoot me! <laughs> As I'm trying to fly away and your, your shots are, uh, are coming in, although a bit low because of, uh, it's not taking account of gravity. But, uh, any changes here? Ah, we have the, uh, escape ship! And it's trying to shoot down your shots. So that's something new. Um, we have these drones here. We have this ship out in the harbor that's trying to shoot things. That's yeah, getting pounded by something. Uh, what's it getting shot by? Is it my base? Is one of these shooting? No. That would be too long range. This we do have a rail gun here now. Is this? I can't remember. No, this ship wasn't mine, was it? Or did I salvage this? Th what is this getting hit by? It's something in this direction. Oh, this... This shooting. This is shooting over to this thing. Okay. That wasn't my bunker. I think your stuff is shooting at each other. Aha! Here is my artillery bunker! There it is! I think that's salvage something from the base of the artillery barrage. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Here is my artillery bunker. Oh, I love this place. I love this little design. It is perfect. And it was entirely built up to destroy the base that was here, but has sort of since been deleted. Since it was too many PCU. So we needed to cut back so we could actually do this, uh, this combat event. And, oh, right! There's a ship up here, too! Uh, is this uh, an AI ship? Or is this somebody's? I don't remember. I think it was just an AI ship. But at some point that combat was going on. Is the big, 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 big ship over there in the harbor? Or is that... I guess that wasn't spawned in just yet. There's the ship flying along. No, the big boat hasn't been spawned in yet. Okay. So this is just sort of a snapshot in the middle of combat of for these bases. And we have this particular uh, ship here um, ready to take off and go to space. So really not much more to talk about in this particular save. Uh, we did have this nuclear space, which is, looks mm, very good. I mean... I would love it if a nuclear reactor in game actually required this much infrastructure because this is kind of cool. We've got these turbines and such and it makes like the like the nuclear reactor produces steam and the steam runs the turbines and like I that's cool. But there is no um, thing here and also I don't think these things are connected. Um, so the this flak tower has zero power. But Nothing really else in this save to talk about. We'll move on to the last save for season four, which will be us in space, I believe. IO did nukes right, working reactor for years. Oh, cool. Because this is the same thing. These are both during that same combat. This is in space, and then this is when I was making a thumbnail later. So, yeah, this one probably. Uh, fixed. I think I would. Yeah, I can't put a question mark. Fixed two. I think I already have something that it's is aggress at war fixed. So I needed to make it number two. Because I have aggress at war v two fixed. And this is aggress war fixed two. Because the different safe. Different save. Ugh. Yep. <laughs> 
I'm broken. Well, if you looked at the mod number, you can go and search what it was. So, uh, let's see if I can find it here. Uh, Steam Workshop one three six five six one six nine one eight. Defense shields retired. So this was defense shields, for example. Started watching you since season one and since been a huge Space Engineers fan. Well, I, I added the huge. He didn't say that. It says you've been a Space Engineers fan. Well, welcome. I'm so glad that you've been watching for so long. I'm glad that people out there enjoy the content. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. He's got a couple more loading screens to go today. Long loading screens. Every time I make a season and it gets to the end and it's just littered with hundreds of thousands of PCU of junk, my loading times always take forever. <laughs> it's even worse for fucking season five. Oh my god, it takes so long to load. It's such a big asteroid filled world. Oh, he's a good doggo. Good girl, Zasha. <laughs> as I twiddle on my phone as I wait. Check my phone for random stuff. You had three gig right before this, yeah. Alright, so this is the final, final scene from season four. We were up at this um, dockyard in space and there is this other ship down here which is currently pointing towards my ship very frightening and uh, where was my base what was back here oh big ship back here cool um my base was this way that's the so that's one good thing about Agoras is that if you remember where things were, you can just sort of be like, ah, I know where I am. I don't need any GPSs. So unfortunately, as you can see, the base is gone. Because as soon as we did the launch, we deleted stuff to save on PCU. Unfortunately. Everything's gone. The Agoras is cl wiped clean. Nothing. Just so you know. But yeah, this is the final uh, scene on it. <laughs> I had to do something like that. Of course I had to. Had to crash it. Fire! Come on, fire the railguns. Oh, come on. Railgun. Mouse control. Yeah, there we go. Let's shoot him up! so loud. Pull back a bit.
<laughs> but yeah, that was the end of season four where we managed to, uh, I managed to build up this nice ship and we made our way to this dockyard in space. We got our jump module, which I should be able to see up here. I installed it already, didn't I? Or did I? No, I haven't grabbed it yet in this, uh, at this moment. So this was the jump module. And it would install nicely. As there was a spot built into it for it. And then you install it and then you jump away and that was the end of the season. I think this ship is also a pretty good ship. Although it is heavily modded because it's got the rocket thrusters. But those are very nice thrusters. Mm, could have been... Could rebuild this thing for... Because this is a modified NPC ship. I could rebuild it. For my current season or something. But anyway. Uh, let's head off to... Something... A bit more exciting in my personal opinion. The end of season four, honestly, personally, was kind of like, okay, I'm actually kind of done with this and I want it to end. Like, I had, I'd played that season for far too long and I was just like, oh, okay, I'm done with this. I want to get out of here. And, uh, let's just call this fixed as well, just because that's what we're calling them all. We'll see if there's any broken mods here. And I kind of want to just get out of, um, get out of there because I was done with it. I was done with it. So season four at the end, season four at the beginning in the middle was really fun for me and I was really enjoying industrial overhaul. At the end of it, it was way too tedious, way too long to make any content about it. And I was just like, can I get out of here and get back to making like interesting content again? So yeah. Oh, right. There's like nothing here. We did like zero mods for this. I remember there's no issues here. Yeah, season two, uh, I didn't really have a moon base, but I had the asteroid base in season two. The season one was a moon base. But yeah, there's, there's some builds back there that I'm just like, man, I wish I had this block or that block or this building technique that we figured out back when I was building things originally. Cause I was like, oh man, I really would like to have that. But all. Yeah, Nanobots was season one. Load game load. Hey, there we go. Hey, and there's Andrew Man. <laughs> there's his body. Push you along here. You can stay on the ship. But here we are. And he also showed me some of his stuff at the end here. So we'll go through this all. We obviously have all of our um, various bits of constructions and all of our stuff here. But we are going to go through first the scenario. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the scenario begins down over here. Uh, that's Olympus Mons. We should begin here ish. No? Is this not the crash site? There's our base. This is our base. We gotta start with the crash site. The crash site is here. Yeah, yeah, I was right. But we just cleaned it out so well there wasn't any grids there. And we'll make it daytime. Because I want to be able to see things. 
Really love your content, always, bro. Well, th thanks, man. I I'm, I'm happy that people enjoy watching my content. So I'll always be making more of it. But season Escape from Mars, sort of uh, three and a half while I was waiting. No, wait. Four and a half while I was waiting for season five to come was honestly some of the funnest space engineers I've ever played in a long time. I really, really, really enjoy playing with Andrew Man Gaming. He is an awesome guy. I want to do another co-op season with him this year. I'm unsure of exactly what I want to do and when we're going to do it. Probably be sometime in the summer. But God damn, that was fun. And if there is a good scenario out there that you guys can know of, send it to me on Discord or something of like, yeah, this is a really good scenario that takes like 10 hours or 20 hours or something like that to beat. So that way we can do it, like beat the scenario. And it's not like a, you know, something that takes like 500 years. You know what I mean? Because I really want to do another scenario with him. I mean, I don't know if anything lives up to Escape from Mars because it's such a good scenario. But hopefully something else. But here we go. We landed at this point. We had a broken ship. And this the intro cinematic that Andrew Man Gaming made for this was amazing. He built it. And if I could pop back up to my person right here, we can see that he made this, which was literally a set. And if you look in here, it's all like nothing. It's just big, giant, empty nothingness. But the spots where we're in here and we're going along here and this are all well built and laid out. And you can see there's the emitters under the floors. And but if you go around this corner, it's empty. There's nothing here. So it's all just a set for that in initial cinematic to then jump on one of these pods, which he took the pod from the scenario and rebuilt it to how he thought it should look. And then he remade it into several different versions. Like this was like the original pod he picked from the scenario. And you can see it was all built by broken. And so he rebuilt the back of it and made it into a real pod to use in this cinematic thing. And then he had the the camera going through here and he put blocks in front of it and painted them green and color chroma like chroma keyed out his camera, his spectator camera flying in like this. And so he could have a footage of them coming in to crash on the through the spectator camera on the ship is so smart he's such a he's, he's so good at that and he made such a great intro for it so uh kudos to him um where was my base again it was here here there's the base here here here's the crash site yes okay so we landed here there's a few parts to gather uh, there's a turret over here where you get your first little bit of technology. And then we built up a small rover and we drove along all along here. And we went into the first point of interest, which is here, the ice mines, which we had very fun trying to take out a turret that was here that was uh, constantly shooting us, trying to jump on top of it and had some shenanigans. Went on down through the ice mine and down and into the ice mine cavern which we went this way there was another turret which blew up we managed to get some extra resources here and got a lot of ice which is very good for us because we needed it for power and we needed it for fuel came down here got some more salvage got a little bit more story there was another turret here Oh, hey, Chop Whitsker, subscribe. Thank you for subscribing. There's another turret right here that killed Andrew Man. I'm, I remember I was standing like right here and he was going like, I'm just going to poke around the corner. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then it one tapped him in the head and he just fell over. And I was like, uh, all right. 
Uh, there's a bunch of cargo containers and like hydrogen tanks back here and it gave us some new tech for hydrogen tanks and such. And that was the ice mines. We did a bunch of salvage, did a bunch of mining there. Uh, I Throughout the season, like this series, I did a lot of off-camera stuff. So the save was on my computer. Andrew Man would join me every Sunday afternoon and we'd record for a few hours. But in the interim, during the week, I would play for another few hours for like a couple nights. And I would do a bunch of mining and do a bunch of prep and get everything ready. So that way when we did our Sunday recordings, we could just go and do the events. And we could do the fun stuff. Same thing what I do for um, uh, Poopa Creed and the Zomboid streams. I do all the prep and all the like tailoring and all the uh, stuff pre-stream. Get all the guns loaded and everything so that way we, heat, we just come on and then it's just fun for like two or three hours. And that's good stuff. So we decided that we didn't want to live there forever. So we drove down with our little rover that we made and we established this base. We have our little open air storage. Our refinery building. It's got our power and our oxygen supply and our battery array, which these are all like salvage batteries because we couldn't build any power cells because we, we couldn't, like, we just didn't have the resources to build these things because we couldn't mine them. And we made an entire underground walkway system in order to get from, um, part of the base to part of the base that way we could get around without going outside in case it was like a lightning storm or something we still have this little pile of batteries here which we never used and this battery here which we never plugged into anything we also had our um our home here which was also our assembly building and our uh cryopods Got our Amdrew man, Kanajeshi, and if we ever brought anyone on, we had a third, in case we needed it. But these are our bedrooms. We got the, the toilet. We got Andrew Man's room. He was doing his other season, his other series right there, where he was driving around Earth-like, and he was making these postcards for every place. So he, this was in the middle of that, and so we put a bunch of his postcards up on, like, a, um, a cork board, which I thought was really cool. And then my bedroom here, again, of course, we're weebifying it, so we've got Fubiki. And I have the corner room, so I got two two windows, which is quite nice. But yeah, we got Fubiki, can watch me as I sleep. We have the, um, oh yeah, it's <laughs> a couple of things we cut off right here at the end. Our landing pad, which we had automatically landing, so the ship would come out over the the our our house and it would come in and then drop in and automatically dock and that was uh andrew man gaming learning how to uh do some of that automatic stuff because he'd never done it before we have the first iteration of a um we have the custom tour controller solar towers no longer is it the script. And our docking for all of our various rovers and our fuel storage and such and our dock for the, uh, the, the giant ship that we used at the end. So from here, what we did is there is a base over here, this base, that would continually send rovers. They would go across the terrain here and would go to this base. This is the main enemy base. So in that route there across here, they would go between they would go within a few kilometers of our base. So we continually headed out from our base and sort of around this area, we would intercept them and blow them up and steal their goodies and take their resources back to our base. Eventually, we did go and blow this up and salvage all the stuff from it and take what we could. Uh, but while this was running, this was pumping out constant little patrols, which were 
so useful. We couldn't have gotten by without the materials from the controls. Uh, also, in this direction, somewhere here, uh, I think it was here. I think, yeah, this was it. This is where I screwed up and I backed into a, a hole and I blew a bunch of batteries up, which is really annoying. But there was a buried rover that we had salvaged a bunch of stuff off of. That was a great thing. Then we went south. There is the, uh, whatever his face is called. Oh, God, what's his face? I forget. What is this guy's name? I gotta teleport myself here. Miki! Miki Scrap! Yeah, thank you, DF Crush. So we found Miki Scrap, and this was a great place to drop off uh, various resources and uh, s these shipments, the ones that we didn't fully destroy. So, like, there's some of them just sitting here, not doing anything anymore. We would take them and drop them off there. And then we went towards the airbase. We got this little place here, which was a good place to respawn in case we died at the airbase. And we managed to take out this airbase. Did a lot of salvage here. You can see the corners of these. There was a battery in each corner. We salvaged those back to our base. Ah, uh, I remember the, the editor. I was cutting up a hole through here and I went, uh, uh, uh. Turret? And I looked around like this, and the editor paused the video right as I panned over. There was a, a turret here, and did the uh, Obi Wan Kenobi, hello, like, uh, and then it insta killed me. <laughs> yeah, we managed to salvage this entire base. There was a free ship here, our little uh, drop ship thingy that we got, our flying ship, which became invaluable for the season, and we took it all back to base. And from base, we again went out on a large expedition. And this time, we went this way, past that, past that, over to this area. That was another enemy base. We never dealt with that one. Where... Where was this? There was a large base over here. I want to remember. It wasn't this. This was the... The large ship at the end. That's the wrong point of interest. The other point of interest is... It was this way. It was here. It was here. Ah, here it is. This was another respawn location for us. And then there was this base. Which... Isn't that much of a base anymore, considering we destroyed a bunch of it. But we managed to tunnel in. And we went through. We got all the way through down here. There was a bunch of explosions in this hallway. This is probably like the funnest hallway that I've ever been in. <laughs> so many explosions, so much fun. And then we get to the doorway that's here. And this was probably the time I laughed the hardest in this entire season was when Andrew went through this doorway and he said, I think it seems fine. Like, we think it seems safe in here. And then the the mecha down here, this guy, just fucking opened up on him, just gaddling him and missling him like crazy. And he's like, oh, my God, ah, he's just like dying. And I'm sitting back here in the tunnel, losing my shit laughing. And that was so goddamn funny. And that is probably the most memorable moment in the entire season for me. I lost my shit laughing. Like, I could not breathe after that. But we finally got in, and we managed to take this guy's arms off. I remember I hid underneath of his, uh, like, I stood between his legs here and distracted him while Andrew Man shot him off or something like that. Uh, there was a, a, a vehicle in here that we did a little bit of repairs on and we used it to help us take out the some turrets that were right here we got through got into this area it's it's pretty salvaged we kind of stripped the place but we got additional lore we learned about the um the mre site 
so then we went back to base from here. Uh, ba -ba -ba, whichever way base is. This way, this way? Nope, which way? This way, this way. We went back to base. We, we managed to cut our way into that room and took the flying ship in and managed to pick the rover up that was in there and placed it into the, uh, the tunnel that we made to cut our way in there and managed to drive it out and drive that thing back to base. That was awesome. We got a lot of resources, like a lot of resources out of there. So then the next thing was to come this way and into this giant canyon and head our way, which, which we, we've totally destroyed it by now. But there used to be a hey, uh, Mr. Wiki. Nice to have you here. There used to be this elevator here. You come through and you pop out and there was this, oh my god, look at this really cool can like this um, cave system. And there was a, the giant ship sitting here in the back corner, just derelict. There was the these guys watching a movie, which is now blue screened, probably ran out of power or something. And I think they were watching Firefly, I can't remember. There was some stuff over here which we salvaged. There was this whole thing. We got some more lore. And so that we we completely dug out this whole thing and flew the ship out of here. We flew it out. We flew it back to base. And when we got it back to base, we made this little arm to connect it. And we figured out that the ship was literally the size of our entire base. When we were like, damn, this ship is huge. And so that after we did a bunch of renovations on the ship, we added some weapons. He had his little janky as shit, but really cool um, railgun manned turret thing he built on the nose, which I used once and shot the nose off. And he had to repair, like repair that. And I never touched his turret again after that because I was not qualified to use it. Yeah. <laughs> And we wanted to test it, so we went over here and we flew up here and there was this airbase. And unbeknownst to us at this time, we didn't realize the fact that our auto cannons had a glitch on them where the the shots were shooting out of the cannon 90 degrees of where they're supposed to. So instead of shooting forward, they were shooting straight upwards. And so I had a bunch of auto cannon turrets and stuff. And the moment they engaged the enemy, they blew themselves up because they shot their own base and such. Because they were aiming straight at the enemy, but they shot straight up into their blocks that were connecting them to the ship. And so the moment I engaged in here, some shit blew up. And there was something else where um, Andrew Man was engaged, but... He was shooting something with an auto cannon, and it shot out my cockpit. I can't remember exactly what happened, but that's kind of what happened. But anyway, we managed to def eventually defeat this base. We stripped it apart. We flew back, limped back to our base over here, and repaired, and figured out what the hell was going on with our turrets. Realized we couldn't use auto cannons. Switched everything over to Gatlings. And then decided to do the final assault on the main enemy headquarters. Hey, just popping in to say awesome 50k while you were live. Keep it being you. You're super chill to hang out with via your videos. Well, thank you so much, Tuna with Mayo. I, I enjoy hanging out with you guys. And making videos is a way that I relax at the end of the day. And so that, that, that chill vibe is just something I want to have. Because it's my stress release to just be excited about gaming and just get it out there so i'm glad that you enjoy the content and thanks so much for watching but yeah we we landed somewhere over here i think i don't know somewhere uh i think where a couple of these wrecks are we landed because it was shooting down these wrecks like crazy and we blew the absolute shit out of this base with railguns 
uh, just shot off all the turrets at range because screw actually going in and taking any damage. And then we breached and cleared it with hand weapons and got a bunch of the details and got a bunch of the salvage and then realized, oh, there's a ship in here. Maybe we shouldn't have been so, um, you know, explosive. But I kind of knew that was going to happen. And I'd already like I at this point of the when we were going to attack this thing, I'd already looked and saw that there was the ship. And since we already had a ship that were capable of getting to orbit, I was like, we don't need to have to. We don't have to pull our punches here. We can go hard. And we uh, blew this ship to smithereens. That's for sure. It would have been nice to be able to launch this as well, but we didn't need to. It would have just been nice. But, yeah. This is, if you ever play this um, scenario, this is kind of how you're supposed to leave but we did the hard part which was digging the other ship out and repairing it and um you're not i don't think you're actually supposed to be able to do that because because we're doing it co-op and your man had the ability to see and place blocks out of his g menu that i wasn't supposed to like if i look at thruster i can see them now there's hydrogen thrusters but I remember them seeing something about you're not supposed to be able to actually see those. You're not supposed to be able to build them. And so I would place them and I'd try to build them or something and I just couldn't. But we could place a welder and the welder could build it. And so we sort of did the welder trick and we built a bunch of stuff that we're probably not supposed to have. So realistically, you're supposed to use this because it has the three large thrusters in the bottom. But we kind of faked our way around it but it made for fun content anyway so whatever but yeah if you ever do this scenario this is kind of how you're supposed to leave you the big the the, the ceiling here retracts and you blast off and you leave but anyway when we blast it off and then we gotta go find our shit ah communication satellite there we go uh, zoop. there we go so you head up to the communication satellite, you get close, and it plays some music that is copyright. And so I had to mute that portion of the <laughs> video. And um, you win. And that's the end of the scenario. And then you can go on back to your... Where we were. And we have all the different... Uh, All the different grids we used. So, let's go through them. This is the flyer. The... Probably our most useful grid. We found this in the airbase raid. It was half built, and we finished building it off, and we also did a bunch of improvements to it. We added some more thrusters. We added some more uh, easier access to the cargo. Uh, I think we repaired the turrets. And we added a railgun in the nose. This is my little dune buggy my little rover meant to just run fast and uh, beat people up with a single turret nothing else beyond that it is meant to just be a little scavenger this was andrew man's uh dune buggy his had a lot more armor he used a tire armor which was kind of fun and so he kind of tanked while i did the dps from the distance then we have the bus which ended up being our main cargo rover. As we can see, we've got all sorts of medium cargo containers on it. And it also ended up being our anti-air rover. So we'd go off to places. So for example, like when we were taking out the enemy ground bases, they would have the ground base, but then as you were near the ground base, they would continually spawn AI drones that would attack the group. And so we needed a rover that could take out the drones really quickly. So what I did is I just covered this thing with auto cannons, filled it up with ammo, and drove circles around the base while Andrew Man used his thing. Uh, this is the one we rescued from the secret weapons facility, the thing with the mech. Um, he sat there at distance with the assault guns on this thing and peppered the enemy base, taking out its turrets and such. So I covered him from anti-air while he did the artillery. And so we used all of these machines and I, I think we actually miraculously managed to 
squeeze them all in to this orange monstrosity here, which I, I still love having that button in the panel thing. There is a bunch of room in here. We managed to just like parking them on the ceiling and bullshit. We just we stuffed those rovers in here to take them with us. But very utilitarian in here. This uh, this ship, lots of just good old fashioned stuff. Oh, here's his uh, his railgun turret. I I do not dare touch it because I will explode something. I do not know how that thing functions properly. We go upstairs. There's my artillery cannons that I put in here. Here's my cockpit with the artillery cannons pointing out. We've got the various weaponry on here with our Gatling PDCs, which uh, I think that was another thing that Andrew Man hadn't really done before was make rotor turrets. So I kind of uh, introduced him to that. We have the Gatling PDCs, two on each side. We had, uh, I think this is assault. Yeah, I think that's assault cannon. Assault cannon. I think these are assaults, and maybe this one's artillery. I can't remember. Or those are all assaults, and maybe the artillery is this. But it served as a really good ship, the Phoenix. He managed to get us into orbit and haul all of our stuff into orbit with us, which I was quite proud of. And that was, uh, yeah, that was Escape from Mars. Good scenario. Probably the best scenario in Space Engineers, as far as I know. I do not know of any other scenarios that go that hard in terms of like AI that feels alive because the AI is moving around and doing stuff and it's like, wow, this is actually really cool. <laughs> the AI is responding to what I do. I attack convoys, it, it adds more uh, escorts. I don't attack convoys for a while, it goes back to normal. It's cool shit. Uh, what else is here? We have the current season into the dark, although I can't really load it on this Space Engineers because I have to boot up Space Engineers with the plug-in loader for it. Um, but what else is here? We have my testing world. Ah, uh, there's a scrapyard scenario where we played with some guys online. The scrapyard. It's like one stream. I should have done more with this. I should have made this like a weekly thing or a, every two weeks or something, but it fell off. I am. It's unfortunate because it's a fun scenario. Uh, but yeah, there's Into the Dark. Uh, Into the Dark thumbnails. There's my different seasons, my worlds. We just all looked at the, all those. Uh, there is my. Testing world for wrong way up, which I think is. All right, wrong way up. That was so much fun. I don't have a save or anything for that, which is annoying. But that was a really fun live stream to be a part of. <laughs> it was so much fun being a little pain in the ass for Splitzy, dropping bombs on them constantly. Oh, was so good. Uh, we can look at my testing world. I don't think anything's broken here. I, I loaded this recently, so it should be fine. This is where I keep all my uh, blueprints and shit. Ugh. And... Oh, at the beginning of this uh, the stream, I was thinking, like, oh, we could go on a public server or something and, like, launch some fireworks, but... Oh, it's been, like, four hours, and by the time I get through the stuff on uh, my testing world here... It'll probably be like four and a half or like four hours and 40 minutes and I'm probably going to be done. And so we'll launch some fireworks and such on my testing world and call it good. <laughs> because I don't want to have to go and like do like an hour of building on a on a world where I can't turn on creative just to plop down some uh, 
some fireworks. Uh, 5 a.m. local. Damn. Yeah, you should go to sleep. <laughs> well, thanks for watching. And thank you for being part of that 50,000. Which uh, is probably a bit higher now because uh, a bunch of people were subscribing during the stream. Uh, let me check. Da, 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 da. Yeah, 50,047. <laughs> the 47 matters. <gasps> there is a thing for the old respawn ship. Oh my god! Respawn ships return. Okay, I need that in my life. All right. Uh, uh. YouTube, shut up about adding ads i don't want to there we go okay this is my blueprint world where i just keep all my random shit we've got copies of everything here look it's my c-130 before i did all of the um turret emplacements and stuff on it and added stuff into the center and uh actually i totally gutted this cockpit too Oh, all right. Let's do a tour. Uh, start over here. Ah, these are the sh these are the rovers from the um uh, the b b b b Pertam rally. Yes, Pertam rovers. I I don't think I'm missing any. I might be missing one or two, but I think that's all the Pertam rovers. We have the Canapache over here being all clangy and awesome we have the c-130 being such a badass flying ship uh, I think this is the hydrogen version yes it is not the oil version that was in the industrial overhaul mod we have our our a10 uh, without a gun because the weapon mod isn't in here but it's still the base frame of it we have our Mustang that I used against Splitzy in Wrong Way Up. This thing... <laughs> Splitzy got mad at me for this. Because these wings are... Wing... Like these, at least they're wing fill here. On the server that we were playing on, they were heavy armor. And then they had heavy armor panels. Like they were sandwiched on both sides with heavy armor panels. And so... Because there were essentially three layers of heavy armor on the wings, they could not kill me. <laughs> they just simply couldn't kill me. And they were like, okay, please, no more heavy armor wings. And I'm like, oh, okay, fine. And so I gave up on that. But yeah, this is uh, my Mustang. Six gats in the wings that are actually piped up. It's beautiful. Then we have the B2. B2 bomber, which I never really got a proper use in uh, that series because we never got an opportunity to use it. We teased it partway through by going like experimental bomber that took off from the an airstrip that was part like about like two thirds of the way through um, wrong way up. They attacked an airstrip of ours and we took this thing, named it Experimental Prototype Bomber, and flew it away, and they were like, oh, what's that? That's kind of scary, but we never got a chance to pay off on that, so yeah, that was unfortunate. Um, I did get to bomb them a lot with the Warthog, though, which is really fun, but it's actually not this Warthog. This is Season 4's Warthog, I think. This is a better Warthog design than the uh, Warthog from Wrong Way Up. The Warthog from Wrong Way Up was thicker, and it had a... If I'm not mistaken, it had a deeper nose. 
Uh, for a long while, to the player NPCs just spawn their planes and... Yeah, we just spawned our stuff in. At an appropriate timings. So, there was rules. Like, you can't go beyond a certain number of weapons. You can't go on... Like, you can't just ram us intentionally. And you can't go beyond, like, a certain amount of durability. And every attack is to be entertaining, but not... You, we can damage them, but we can't dehabilitate them. We can't, like, bomb them to the Stone Age sort of thing. So we can take out a ship, and then we should label that as a success and run away sort of thing. So the it was meant to be sort of a harassing force, but there was a little bit of chaos in there, but we would never fully destroy them. So, like, <laughs> there was that time... When we were running away in the tank and they were attacking the airfield and they charged into the airfield and we shot the tank shot at them and it happened to catch their fuel tank. And this was right after the update to the game that added fuel tank explosions. But Splitsy was still using the mod, which had also fuel tank explosions. And so things like multiplied with each other. And the instant that tank got hit by the by the assault round shot the entire shit the entire front rover exploded that was i was driving that tank somebody else was on the gun that's who shot it was the person who was in the the gunnery seat of my tank at the time because <laughs> i was running away with the tank to go back to the base and i was we were gonna like do like like uh poke out and shoot and get back into cover and play like uh, be like hull down tank sort of thing but it just hit the wrong thing and absolutely exploded and Sasha's coming over to lay beside me so no more doggo cam unfortunately she is now literally at my toes oh he's a good girl Jess you're within scratching distance aren't you you just want to be within scratching distance oh he's a good girl I love you doggy uh, during one of the final fights, this was my little Nighthawk, I think it is. F-117 Nighthawk, yeah. Uh, this thing looks cool, it flies like shit. Not enough wing, and these, uh, these, uh, things are not stable. And they, th this thing is not good to fly. Uh, uh, well, if you want to talk, like, if you want to DM me on Discord, go ahead. You can join the Discord and DM me there. And I can take a look at whatever you're talking about. Uh, this is my Raptor, I think I called it. Raptor, yeah. This is an upgrade to it, Raptor 2. This was my uh, ship for air-to-air -air combat in that uh, Wrong Way Up series. It was very good. Uh, again, Splitsy got mad at me because <laughs> I made it too durable. I made it with internal thrusters. A hell of a lot of internal thrusters. And a bunch of internal batteries and things. And so I could, like, th theoretically, this ship, you could lose this entire tail section. Like, cut you could cut the ship off right here and it would still fly fine even without its uh back thrusters so Splissy didn't like that because they shot out my back thrusters and i flew away and they're like what the hell <laughs> and then eventually when they shot one down and they cut it open and saw that it had a bunch of internal thrusters they're like oh that's why this thing never dies and so Splissy banned that so that's why he liked the uh, these because the thrusters were on the exterior and they're very obvious. You could shoot them off and then the thing would crash. <laughs> uh, that was good. Oh yeah, that I have my tanks from that season. This is my main battle tank here. This is the Jackal. Wait, is it that the Jackal or is this the Jackal? I think this is the Jackal. Yeah, the Jackal. That's the one. This, 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 this right here, officer. This is the one. This is the one that blew up Splitsy's rover. <laughs> this cannon right here. 
but yeah, you have a, a, a back seat and a front seat. The front seat's the driver, I want to say. And uh, the back seat is the uh, turret controller. Although, I have to fix the scripts on this because the, um, the skid steer script is not functioning right now. I gotta reset the script. And then this needs to be able to take control of the turret. But, yeah. This was the, uh, the, this was the tank. Uh, this is the chassis base. I need to rebuild this because the, um, custom turret controller and stuff. Wait, this had, this had custom turret controller. But I believe they changed something. So when I built this, they had something where you couldn't control a turret and drive at the same time. But now they do. So you can control a turret and you can still drive. So you can go in here and you can go um, custom turret control and wait, can you custom turret control and you should be able to still drive yeah, see how I can still accelerate and decelerate and stuff like that? So you can you can drive, like, alone. When I built this, you weren't able to do that. So I, I designed it for two because I was on the assumption that you could not operate this on your own. But nowadays you can, so... I need to redesign this whole thing so that it is only a single driver, which I think I was doing here. I think this is the updated... Yeah, this is the updated tank. So I can control the turret, but I can also drive. So this is my updated Jackal-style tank. So yeah, this is my new, new tank. One assault gun, two auto cannons, and an auto cannon turret on top. I use this with. Was it Survival Bob, another YouTuber? I w went on a couple of you live streams of his that uh, I brought this tank out and used it to uh, take out some enemy emplacements. Uh, this is just the. Um, workshop item for airlock how to do it with the new event controller and stuff so I can remember how to do it. Uh, did you end up recording your POV a wrong way up? Uh, nope. Never recorded it. Ah, uh, this is just a field of rovers. Just bison and its variants, essentially. Here's the bison. Survival one. And then you got a ore one, and then a cargo one, and then a tanker, and then a a uh, combat one and a different combat one and a uh, um, extra large tanker that I used on uh, Split C series. Which one was that? It was an Escape from Purgatory. I used something like this to uh, haul a bunch of stuff with, like, to drive around on the planet. Uh, it was my little scout ship, a little, like, almost pickup truck version of a ship. And then this is something I built recently, which. I kind of want to use it in Season 5 at some point, which is like a um, cargo drone thing, because even with realistic thrust, because this thing is so balanced and all the cargo is like centralized and such, the AI can fly this even with realistic thrust. So I'm tempted at some point I'm going to set this up and set it up to be like a AI cargo drone or something. Uh, we have... The updated Mastodon. So, this was used in Wrong Way Up as a boss enemy. We had the new turrets on here with... I can't remember if these are custom turret controllers or not at that point. Or if it's still scripts. No, it's custom turrets. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we got custom turrets now. 
And we had three custom turrets, we got a couple of gats, one on each side, we had the autocannon in the center for anti-air, we had this big old artillery gun to take out uh, stuff at range, and we replaced the um, welder, the, the grinding pit with the Penelope cruise missile, <laughs> which was so much fun, and I enjoyed firing off cruise missiles at them several times. Uh, we painted it bright green, though, I think, for the scenario, and we also made sure that these hydrogen tanks were brightly colored. I think it was orange, so they knew that it was a uh, weak spot, and so they could take it out. But was it, um, wasted? Was it wasted? It got underneath this thing and ground out all of its wheels, and so it just ended up being on blocks, and then they could come in and take it at their own pace, and so the thing was, uh, wasn't able to fight back. But yeah, they took it out. Uh, temporarily over here, just real quick. These are my um, rotor charts, various types. We've got the GAT, got the autocannon, we've got... Um, these are like naval gun, like 100mm naval gun sort of looking things. I've got a pair of gun sort of looking things. Because there is one up on the Discovery. It's a turret for the Discovery. And I think it looks really good. Oh, and Sasha's back to lay down beside the couch. Not in camera range. I still use your Panther Hydra ship. I don't remember what ship that is. That's so many ships. Uh, this is... The Marauder! Without his turrets. Just holes. But still it's the Marauder. Big black cargo hauler. I don't remember, man. I haven't... Is so many ships I've made in the past. I don't remember what a big black cargo hauler would be. Panther. Le oh, wait, you mean the Leopard? You mean the, the my remake of the Battletech ship? The Leopard? Because I don't remember a Panther, but I did make a Leopard. Leopard dropship. But yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. Hey, thanks, thanks, Alec. Thanks for congratulating me. But yeah, I built this uh, thing right here for the Discovery to be a naval turret without actually being a naval turret mod. So, I mean, I got a bunch of weapon uh, mods on here, but... There was the... Well, I can't remember what it was called. The ones I used in Season 4. They were really nice. But I didn't have them here. And I'm just like, ah, screw it. I can make my own. And then I made this that looks like a naval gun. And stuck it on here. And I think it looks really, really good. But yeah. This is the save discovery. It's a little turret tower. Uh, this was used as an enemy emplacement in... Wrong way up. Northwind. That was what it was. And there's my little hydrogen base. I used this in Wrong Way Up as an enemy base that they blew up. We put it there as a great big pile of hydrogen so they could refill because we had blown up some stuff and they were really low on fuel. And so we're like, here, we'll set up a base so they can siphon some fuel and they can get back on the road again. And then they blew it up because, you know, they blow up things. And then I also used this in Season 4 as a hydrogen base. The same design, uh, at least interior design. The The area didn't have the parking spots in front, but the same interior design of auction tank, uh, HO2 generator, auction tank, battery, repeat. Um, it was a little bit longer, but it's essentially just this entire thing, just copy and paste a little bit longer. Nothing special about it, but it's a nice little base for hydrogen. I think it works well. Uh, what else? I think that's all my blueprints. Oh, except for the, uh, this is the, yeah, it's the gopher. And we have my various, um, starting ships from the various seasons. So, we have, so, season one starting ship was the base starting ship, which I wonder if that had, uh, has that come down yet? Oh, no, those are actually set up as spawn ships. Oh, cool. Um, 
Oh, and while I'm here, I'm just going to spawn in the drama area because I want it in this. In, I want it in this world. Yes, spawn in the drama area. I know it's not going to have its hyperdrive, but that's okay. I don't need a hyperdrive on this thing. I want to say congrats on the 50k subs, and I envy you and everyone else's ability to design ships and stuff. Can't really build a decent ship to save my life, and ground rovers are not much better. Hey, just keep at it. And honestly, a functional ship is better than a uh, pretty ship, in my opinion. But when you can do pretty and functional, that's really nice. But, yeah, I don't know. I... I I personally am sort of meh about a lot of my own ships. Like, there's only a few that I feel like I like. And realistically, most of them involve taking an existing design, like the B2 or the Mustang, and just trying to recreate it. Although, doing that has led me to... Um, learn the design process like for example the discovery here is not mine originally it's a heavily heavily modified at least the internals the internals are completely gutted but the exterior of the ship is a ship from the workshop so what I did I took the ship and I gutted it and I rewired it and I made it my own so I think that's a really great way to learn how to build ships in this game. Take an existing thing, totally rebuild it however it makes you feel good. And then eventually you'll just pick up on how to build things correctly. Like something I need to do the dromedary over there is I need to uh, extend its front landing gear to about here, about maybe halfway down because as you saw there, it fell when I tried to park it. So, is it not built correctly? Okay. Season 1 was the old starting ship. So, we had that. Season 2 starting ship was this jump jack here. Which was my first attempt at building a little starting ship. And this thing is actually a bit broken. It doesn't work right now. Because deep inside here, there is a gap of a block right here where a build and repair ship was originally um, and that is causing these gyros to be just floating and yeah so this thing needs a bit of a repair in order to be functional but at least it's here the jump jack exists a uh, good little ship I uh, can barely fly in atmosphere uh, much better on moon or space as that's where it started. So I mean, it's quite obvious that that's where it should be Season three start was all about the rovers. So we had the bison which honestly is one of my favorite starting ships ever I think this thing is amazing uh, It required a little bit of uh, finesse in order to get this 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 side is your access you have access to your h2o2 generator through the large port of it as well as your survival kit and then in the back you could uh, get your stuff in and out how I did that and how I got the stuff like ported up to the cockpit here with my engine kicked on was that in the back of the H2O2 generator here it is all piped in with small conveyors that was the only way I can make it work. Now, there are different ways that I could have done this nowadays, because you have some better blocks and such for doing it, but this is how I made it work back then. I could redesign the interiors of this and make it so that your HO2 generator is just accessible from the back, but I had a oxy tank on here, which I should have repositioned this oxy tank. Like, I can reposition this. 
the 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 difficulty with building the interiors of these ships is the fact that on one end of the survival kit you have a large port on the other hand you have two small ports so the survival kit becomes sort of this block it's either any anything in front of it or anything behind it can't get components to it so you have to decide where your survival kit goes into design so that way whatever you can get from the back here you can get components out of it and everything forward of that you don't worry about the being able to get components or large items such as bottles and stuff through the conveyor system. I could have put the H2O2 generator back here and plugged it into the large system, but I didn't think of that, and it's not how I built it, but whatever, it's fine. It's a highly functional ship that does its job, which is to get you started while being mobile. We have the Wave Rider, season three starting ship. Uh, this is, again, this was made using the fluidy blocks. I don't know if it would actually float nowadays i don't know if there is enough void here for this and i'm not sure if it just needs to be void or if it actually needs to be void with um a vent for pressurizing it but you could probably make that work you could probably pressurize this thing and make it float um but as it stands it's not as good as it was but you can kind of see what I was doing with the Sorrel kit as well, with the needing it to be a certain side, where we have the two smalls go into the H2O2 generator, which then goes into the cockpit. So at least from the cockpit, you can access the H2O2 generator to get bottles out and such. But the Sorrel kit going back then into a cargo container and... Oh wait, this was a conveyor and then a cargo container, because then the conveyor is going up to the turret. But overall, this is a really nice little ship. Really nice little boat to get started on Season 4 with. And this was the prototype for Season 5 starting ship, actually. It was going to be a space plane. And I was thinking that I was going to spawn in orbit around something and deorbit as my first thing and start on the planet. But after I had played so much Season 4 on a planet and basically never went into space the entire time, I was sick of being on planets. So I scrapped this entire thing. So this potential starting ship, which is essentially a Wave Rider um, modified, extra length, more thrust, more thrusters, like more hydrogen. Um, it also has some atmospherics built around the ship and it has enough downwards thrust built around the ship it's got the three here and it's also got a couple buried in its chest here and one at the nose that it could actually fly vertically um, i can show that off with realistic thrust so it was balanced so this thing could hover and with realistic thrust, it was very small rotation, but it was easily manageable. This was going to be Season 5 starting ship. But I decided I did not want to do planetary stuff immediately. I wanted to be in space. So hence, I had that ship building stream where I actually went off to the moon of this world and built a bunch of ships there. Uh, I built that ship that had the uh, four rotating um, pods on it. I thought that was going to be my ship, but then it was, like, way too fuel guzzly. Um, is that out there somewhere? Uh, distance from players. 70... Fourth, oh, that's on the other... That's on per tam. Um... 70k? This is in orbit. I'm pretty sure. Oh no, these are at the center of the goddamn planet. What the hell? Where the hell are these? Oh no, these are in other parts of the planet. Yeah, okay, never mind. Doesn't matter. Uh, what mod are those wheels from? Realistically, uh, it's not from the aerodynamic physics mod, but the plane parts mod. Plane parts. 
So if you look at them here, uh, mod, plane parts, that's the Steam ID for it. And that's where you get the, the wheels as well as the rotors on the Mustang and the C-130. So I built the Spectre instead, which I think is sort of the epitome of my current skill in building ships. I really, really like the Spectre. I think it is well greebled, well colored, but it's also like blocks are put together in a way that they actually seem to fit together. Like I like this, these thrusters on the side how it comes like it's coming along and then it just sort of has a little bit of a fin and then the thruster and then the next one and then a little fin and then the thruster it like works and uh we have the 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 lights built in to this the the grid uh, obviously this thing is uh, ion so we can't fly here but i really really like the spectrum and i just have three copies of it for some reason i don't know why Oh, I was doing different weaponry and stuff on it. This is like Gats. Is that it? Yeah, and this is auto cannons and such. These are modded Gatlings. They look like uh, assault turrets or whatever, but they've got Gats. Yeah, and that... That, I think, is it. We're at 4 hours and 45 minutes on the stream, which is ridiculous. But... Oh wait, we got some more shit out here in the in the in the lake. I forgot about these things. These are bigger ships. This was more testing for season five. This was me trying to figure out how big of a ship I wanted to make for season five. So you can see me trying to figure out um, sort of overall ship size, and I built like a little um, potato, little potato ship. I actually kind of like this ship. I think it's cute. You can come in through here. And you've got the the starting thing. Uh, any of these available blueprints? Nope. They're mine. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, uh, no. I do not have many things on the workshop. Uh, out of this, uh, out of this world, basically nothing's on the workshop. This is my little testing world. I really like this potato ship. I think it's actually quite cute. Uh, there's no airlock on it, which is one unfortunate thing, which would be if I were to make an airlock on it, I would not have something on one side and I would move something like this over to the other side and make more room for an airlock. I could do that design, but you can close these up. You're in your little potato ship. You can come here into the cockpit, close it up. You've got a couple vents. You've got a couple... Um, computers on here you got your kitchen your bathroom your shower your cargo access your bed your survival kit survival kit is pl plumbed up uh cargo container is just small it's a starter ship that's what it's meant to be you have a couple oxy tanks so you have plenty of oxygen a couple two day two gens you got a single rocket launcher uh, i think you have one large yeah one large hydro tank um that's where the main uh, sort of bulk of the ship comes from, is the fact that the the entire back is just one large hydro tank. Um, real, realistically, you could get around with making that a smaller thing, but it's got this chungus of a thruster in the back compared to its weight, so it's got really good thrust. And uh... wait, I think this thing doesn't really even have braking thrust, does it? I think I forgot. I think I didn't know how to put braking thrust on this thing. And I was like, I don't know where to put it. And this thing can't break. If I'm not mistaken. Because I don't know where my braking thrust is. There's a missile turret here. Like a missile launcher. That's its main weaponry. I have no idea where its brakes are. <laughs> Unless I did like internal thrusters somewhere. But I don't think I have the space. Yeah, it doesn't have many braking, so... Oh, wait, it does! It does have internal thrusters! It has two small th thrusters for braking! Oh my god, I'm so good at this game. Yeah, I love this little ship. It's such a little potato, but it's so cute. Whoa! Oh god, I gotta turn on the... Dampeners. 
breaks are turn and burn. Yeah, probably. The little ones are just for, uh, like, docking um, orientation and such. But this thing, it just goes... And it just... It just yeets itself. It goes so fast. Once it starts going. But the whole thing was just to be, like, a little potato and... Uh, go quick. Uh, contemplating this being some sort of, like, large grid starting ship. There we go. Let's open up the doors again. Cute little potato. Uh, this is... Could be a little larger potato. Again, a little bit larger. Just sort of trying to figure out ship dimensions. Seeing how ship dimensions fit in with different thruster clusters in the back. I'm trying to do like internal thrust as well for all this stuff. And then try to take those thrusters and fill them out and see how that worked. So I got like eight thrusters in the back and how does that work? How does that feel? How do they go together? You know, sort of thing. And then we have, um, again, another copy of the better airlock thing, so I can remember how it's made when I was making airlocks for the ship. And then this ship, which is actually a pretty nice ship, uh, and maybe needs a little bit of adjustments, but it still works with um, realistic thrust. Carillion Cruiser vibes there. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good ship. We got four thrusters in the back. I really liked the staggering, where the uh, mid thrusters are two blocks further out than the... The, the side thrusters and they had the thruster sort of pods on the side as you can see I I piped up every single way that I could possibly pipe up and just covered it with guns although it really doesn't need this many guns um, but it could probably just use like in the in the real world probably just like some cheek guns and a uh, couple gats and that would probably be all it really needs but this thing is an awesome little ship uh, we can go inside. This thing has a proper um, airlock. We can come inside, cycle the airlock. Thing automatically goes through. We have an interior here. I actually really enjoy this interior. I built this on stream a while ago. I think you saw that, Nat. Um, but we got the aquarium. We got the the combat bridge, so you can be at the center of the ship. You got your 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 cargo access, your cryopod, H two O two Gen. Survival kit. There's the assembler, which you can go up here and access the assembler that way. And you could probably put something into the wall here, like like a inset something. But I think that goes to the exterior, doesn't it? I think that's the exterior wall. Yeah, it is exterior wall. So maybe you put something inset there or not. It might just not look that good. Um, and then up here on this side, you have like your little home because there's the bed and your couch and your stuff and you can do whatever you want there and then you go up this side you go through another airlock which you can lock that up and you got your uh computers and your armory and your little panels and then you got your cockpit and there's one thing is that they have guns on the bottom because you know you kind of want guns on the bottom but that requires you to have these legs and i don't really like the legs i really don't like the legs on this thing it's too long too much sits too high I really like the mag plates that this thing has it's so this little potato just sitting on the ground nice and snug I want to be a potato too so yeah owl legs so possibly there would be a way that you would want to shorten these legs maybe get rid of these guns on the belly and uh, just make the mag plates But it's got tons of thrust. Like it, it, it can go, and good brakes because it's got the two large going backwards. So lots of thrust. Only thing it's side to side is a little weak, but that's it. But if you need to worry about side to side, you just rotate and thrust upwards. Who cares about side to side? Oh, 
I think Sasha wants out again. This dog, man. This dog never ever stops being an annoyance to me sometimes. As a goal for the stream, uh, most of the stream has been reminiscing about old shit. And now we're just looking at some stuff, old, some designs that never saw the light of day. Uh, this is a test to see how much thrust I needed to haul uh, four large cargo containers full of shit. And it turns out a lot. You need a hell of a lot of thrust to do it. Especially to pick it up to go to orbit. Uh, probably at some point in the Season 5, I'm going to build something like this. As, like, the ultimate dropship. And it's, it might not have this many hydrogen tanks. But, because there's, like, 12 hydrogen tanks on this thing. Really doesn't need it. It could deal with half those. But it definitely needs this much thrust. It needs 12 downward thrusters in order to, like, fully loaded. I'm barely accelerating here. Barely. Like, I get any amount of speed, and look how slow this thing is to, to slow down. Like, it would just be frightening. You're coming into landing on a planet, and you're like, uh, please slow down. Please slow down. Please slow down, Jip. Oh my god, please slow down. Oh god, it. it it clipped through the ground when I landed. That was not good. All right, we'll leave it right there. But yeah, that was a. Uh, this is a concept, sort of just testing to uh, see how much thrust I needed, and it had uh, six forward thrusters and what. Four backward scissors? Yeah. Something like that. Playing solo? Yeah. Just reminiscing about old stuff. Looking at designs and things. But, Sasha is being a little annoying girl again. Because she always is. And we need fireworks. Okay, I gotta go let this dog out again. Because she's being an annoying girl. Uh, any crazy railgun ships? Nope. I don't really do many uh, big railgun stuff. Oop, there's the camera notification. There's n movement in the backyard. No shit, it's the puppy. Where is she? She's by the back patio. Okay. I've got her in my sights. She is going to her outside bucket of water. She is weird. I have a I have a bowl of water right here in the room and she can drink at it, drink from it whenever she wants. Yet she will go off into the outside and go to the this random bucket that has got a bunch of dirt and stuff into it and uh she'll drink from that because she's weird as shit. But she is also cute. So she gets away with it. Firework. Uh, conveyors. Uh, because fireworks can be conveyed, right? No, they can't. Never mind that. Yeah, dirt, bucket water has more flavor. That is, that is true. Fire some fireworks. Celebrate. Celebrate good times. Come on. Uh, these. Do I need ammo for these if I'm in creative? 
Am I in creative? Is a very good question. Does it? Oh, it needs power probably. No, I don't need ammo. Okay, they can just fire. Uh, but wait, they have the different um. Why are they falling back to Earth? The hell? Why aren't they exploding in the air? <laughs> okay. I don't know what's going on. God, there's firework, uh... Rainbow, firework, blue, red, green. Okay. Uh, I think we're on rainbow. I think we're good. Oh, are you woofing to come in now, Sasha? Really? Okay, she just went out. She drank from her outside bucket of water. And she wants to come back in. That's that that goddamn dog. God damn. Gotta bait her in with treats. Good girl. I gotta get you on camera here for the final bit. Doggo game. Oh. Go into your bed. 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 Go to bed. Okay, fine. Come over here, pets. Oh, you're a good girl. Oh, you're a good boy. Oh, oh you're a good girl. Oh, you're a good doggy. Okay. No, go to bed. I'm just about done, and then I will give you a nice brush. And you, you will not enjoy this, but I'm also gonna clean your ears. Because you've been shaking your head a lot, and I'm afraid you're getting an ear infection. Anyway. Oh, she's going to come lay... Yeah, she's going to come lay at my toes. That's what she's going to come do. Ah, the wrong thing. Doggo. Get rid of that. Oh, he's a good girl. Hi, he's a good girl. Yes. Oh, she's licking my knee. Oh, hi, Dasha. Hi, girl. Oh, you give me kisses. Give me a kiss. Oh, yes, you're such a good girl. Oh, you're such a good dog. Oh, you're such a good girl. I gotta fire off some fireworks. It's okay, Sasa. Oh, you're a good girl. All right, button. Uh, she is resting her. She is resting her chin on my knee. She's very cute. Very very cute. Fireworks. Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Yes, cook. shoot on off. Make it night. I can't make a night. The sun is fixed in this world. Okay, we'll just copy this. And we'll go to where it's night. Uh, where are we? I don't know where we are. Or somewhere. Uh, I'm in creative, so I'll be fine. <laughs> I don't know how high up I am. I don't know where I am. What's my elevation? I'm just falling. It's so dark here. Ah, here we go. Ah. Near. Near. And. <laughs> okay, yeah. Why aren't they exploding in air? <laughs> ah! It, it's a... It's an attack! <laughs> it's exploding around me!
Yo, seriously, why aren't they exploding in the air? This makes no sense to me. Do I have to take you out into space or something for you to uh, actually explode properly? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, Sasha, I know you're staring at me because you want attention. You'll get attention in about five minutes, doggy. I'm going to wrap this up, okay? Do a fireworks show, and then we'll play. Okay? Good girl. Uh, can I set the fire type of firework? I don't know. I don't know why these things aren't working. I haven't used these yet. It's got firework rainbow. Do you have something that mods fireworks? I don't know. Maybe I do. <laughs> I might need to pop into a fresh save. That's what I'll do. I'll pop into a fresh save. Because there's probably something to do with my testing world here that is making them break. So, oh hey, dog's in her bed. I can put the Gago cam back on. We'll just do a random custom game. Star system, creative. No mods, don't need any. Ah, oh. oh, man, it's so f it feels so good to have this milestone. And uh, looking forward to continuing on. My ultimate goal is to get the play button at 100k. I any past that, I don't care. But now that I've gotten to 50k, and it's like, okay, it's actually within reason to get 100k like it's i could do it i want to get to 100k get the play button and anything past that will just be for like hooray sort of thing bonus but yeah that's the goal i think i can do it in like another two years or so Uh, I think, yeah, I think in about another two years or so, we can get, uh, 100k. Little zippity doo -dah day down to the planet. Um, we will do, oh, a quick, quick a curse for our specific... Lake. Season 2's lake. I want to do it there. I know what it looks like from orbit. I just need to find it. Uh, it is not on this hemisphere. Other hemisphere. Over here. Uh, no, not that like. Where be season two's lake? Not that one. This is where I did some season one stuff, I believe. There, season two's lake. Yeah! Alright, we'll do it right over here. Right where the, uh... Space, uh... Right where the air, air control tower would be. Where's my mic again? Damn. All that loading. Oh, that's what's going on. Hopefully now that I'm at the location, it's not doing that anymore.
Yeah, but it's probably all the loading that's causing it to go weird. Explode, damn it! <laughs> Why? Why did they all hit the ground? Oh my god, okay. We're gonna take you to another planet. Or we'll just take you into space. Fuck it. Ah, we'll see what it's like on the moon. Is this the moon? Oh, this is Triton. Uh, where's the moon? Let's go see what it's like on the moon. <laughs> hey, it works. Okay, we're good here. <laughs> Uh, shoot on off. All right. I'm going to sit back over here on a specter. Right, the turrets. That's okay. It doesn't need to. It doesn't need the turrets. actually move? Hello? So many overriding. Why? There we go. We're gonna land ourselves in a little specter right here. And we turn off our lights. And we're gonna get a little seat. Put it on our roof. And we're going to trigger the fireworks and sit back and watch. Ah. Look at him go. Get a good view of... Uh, my character enjoying the fireworks. Well, I'm going to wrap up this reminiscing stream here. Uh, I want a big heartfelt thanks to every single one of my viewers. I thoroughly enjoy making content and I'm glad that people out there like to watch it and participate um, I'm gonna continue making content for a while and I'm gonna go over and rub the puppy so everyone gets that as well Gonna be it for now. Yeah, season five. Uh... Wait, I should have. <laughs> I have to put out an episode today, don't I? I haven't put out my season five episode for today yet. Shit, I gotta go release that. <laughs> uh, yeah, season five episode will come out in about 12 or 10 minutes. <laughs> it's probably too late for today, but whatever. Um, I fully forgot. <laughs> I was too busy with this stream. I forgot to put my episode out. Uh, I gotta go make a thumbnail and stuff. It'll be out in a bit. Um, maybe like an hour from now because I'm gonna go take a break and have a snack and drink some water because my th my throat's done. 
and then I'll make a thumbnail and put it out there. I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm a horrible slacker. Uh, I gotta stop alt tabbing so we can actually hear these fireworks. But, well, if you want to see it immediately, did you know you can go to the Discord, join up, within the rules selection, you can select, um, like the role selection, you can select to be a space engineer, you can see the space engineer channels, and then you can go to the end of the dark sub channel within there, and the, vi the video is already posted there. You can watch it immediately if you want. And you can also you can always watch the episodes a few days ahead by going to that sub channel, but it'll release publicly in like an hour. <laughs> that's gonna be it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, good hunting out there, fellow space engineers.